That's not the game. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh, Make sure we've saved. I notice there's no inventory sort. Is that a thing, too? Like, is that not a thing? I guess it's actually probably a better way to phrase that. It's auto-sorting, but there's no sort button. So I guess that's the same thing, really. That's whatever. Hi, Hyperspeed Folklore. Hi, Inocians. Good afternoon, the Poindexter. Hey, Valerian. Not what I expected from that. There's a lot of bandit leaders down here. You notice that? What's with all the bandit leaders? God. I mean, by that logic, we just keep killing forever, Valerian. Until we run out of bandits. Just gotta kill them all. Hmm. That makes sense in those hands. <clears throat> Excuse me. In other words, how accurate it is kind of depends on how they itemed, or excuse me, organized the items originally. To begin with. So, how much in combat scripting can be done in VX? You know, bosses reacting to actions, uh, X happening at, at Y HP barrier, or. You know, being able to track certain vulnerabilities of the targets, that kind of stuff, right? Okay. <laughs> That's just... Just accept that one. So, what I'm hearing is none of that's baked in, but you can do whatever with it. I ask because, in my experience, the way to make combat really engaging in a turn-based ATB-style game like this is to rely really heavily on scripts to make the enemy interesting to fight, you know? FF4DS, you know what I mean? Or arguably FF10, to use another example. Yeah, you hit a little hard. I suppose that's a fair point. RPG Maker isn't supposed to be something complex. That's not really the point of it. Uh, oh, I'm silenced, right? Oh, shoot. Disco's here. So Disco asks, what would you rather do? A roleplay let's play of a Fallout protagonist who ends up on Tamriel, or an Elder Scrolls protagonist ending up in Fallout? I feel like Fallout to Elder Scrolls would make more sense, for various reasons. 
I mean, you know, imagine you show up, you don't have the ability to repair your gun, you don't have the ability to get new ammo, so whatever weapon advantage you have is lost very quickly, and you're forced to acclimate, right? Well, if I get to pick... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I'd probably go with Fallout 3 to Fallout New Vegas to Skyrim. I think that's what I'd do. Well, that's pretty unpleasant, Zach Deft. Although, that's an interesting question. Would your magic stick if you went to Fallout? Because it wouldn't necessarily do so. You might simply be unable to cast. Especially if you have no way to get your mana back, or even if your mana exists at all. I stand by my statement regardless. Yeah, I've noticed that other than the threat thing, which is neat, the combat seems fairly basic. Now, that's not going to be a negative before you ask, but it's definitely not going to be a positive. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it'd be like giving Final Fantasy 1 a plus to combat. It doesn't really work that way, you know? Oh, you're fine in Oceans. Although, I probably should go ahead and just crank the difficult up to hard now so we can try it out for a bit. I doubt I'll stay there. I feel like combat would get way too boring if I did, but we can just do it. I do want to try at least one boss fight like that. Yeah, tell him to shoot Cerberus on sight, Zach Taft. I think that's the way to the desert, because that's a shifting tile set. Hi, DJT. Hmm. Well. Let's say, get a bad idea save in here. Out hard for a bit, shall we? <laughs> well, they're definitely hitting harder, immediately, noticeably harder. Unless those are two very lucky dice rolls. It's funny you mentioned drop rate. So far I think I've seen a grand total of two items drop from combat. Total. Ever. Oh wow, they definitely have more HP. Excellent, Zach Def. good to know. Um...
That doesn't sound very complex to me, Cycloud. Dragon Quest 1 had to load the final boss as two separate encounters rather than actually mutate the boss into a phase change. <clears throat> Ah, gotcha. You don't have to, Anosians. At the very least, I just kind of want to try out a boss battle and see how that feels. <laughs> He's saved right before, I don't know. Nah, Morton's people don't need biotics act out. They're good without them. <clears throat> Best game engine. It's a good question. Virtually every good engine out there comes with a bunch of asterisks that kind of make it go, eh. I suppose that's just going to be the thing. You're not going to get away from an engine that has problems. I suppose the obvious choice is Unreal and the other U1, which, uh, Unity, there we go, which are the generico uh, engines and can do the most different things and are probably the easiest to work with and have the lowest barrier to entry. <clears throat> Excuse me. So yeah, probably Unreal or uh, Unity. Now, there are specific engines that are better for specific types of games, obviously. What is my throat doing? Ah, anyways. But... Like, if you ask me what the best RTS engine is, normally I'd say, you know, something like, uh... Whatever StarCraft II's is, but StarCraft II's engine, while extraordinarily flexible, is also kind of bad. Then there's the RE engine, which is really good, but... You know, that's kind of its own thing, and I honestly don't know that much under the hood about the RE engine. The new one. Well, yeah, isn't, like, Hearthstone made in Unity? Just to go into ridiculous land with that? Because you can make a lot of stuff in Unity. It's just, it's Unity. Now, admittedly, I tend to get Unity and Unreal mixed up because they both start with you, and they both have their own issues. But I am pretty sure... That one of those has a memory leak problem like crazy. I just don't remember which one it is, because I have no brain. I replaced it with Indian food. It was a good deal, I think. That being said, let's say you came to me and said, Laura, what engine are you going to use? I'm not using Unity. Screw that noise. Thank <laughs> you. 
And of course, whether or not you want to use Unreal or not kind of depends on whether or not you want to deal with the the baggage that comes with using Unreal. How did you know, Bregwin? No, I have it, Loner. I mean, okay, real talk. Let's say I win the lottery, what is today, Tuesday? This Thursday. I'm gonna make my own engine. I'm gonna sit down with people who know what they're doing and make sure that they are taken care of and productive and happy and say, this is what I want out of an engine. These are the types of games I want to make out of this. And then I will make my own engine. And by I, I mean they, because I won't be a part of that. I don't have that kind of a brain. Told you, Indian food. Yes, it does, in Oceans. But that's how I tend to think in general. I would rather... I don't have an analogy for that. I'd rather have the backing before the product than just try to jump into making the product, if that makes any sense. Oh, I would take the lump sum, Ross, absolutely. Because I'm not stupid. <laughs> wow, yeah, these have way too much health. My goodness. We were talking about all the games I would do a remake of earlier, too. I mean, yes, Loner, legitimately. I don't know how much you know about Frostbite, but the fact that Dragon Age Inquisition works is kind of crazy when you think about it. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, they're, pl oh my god, they killed Sullivan. Oh my god, they're killing Claret, and I'm still blind, which is part of why I'm having so many issues here. Well, yeah, like, there, okay, there is a reason to take payments when it comes to uh, winning the lottery. And it boils down to, are you bad at money? If you are bad at money, go ahead and take payments. If you are not bad at money, if you have a brain, and if you are capable of managing your money, then take the lump sum. But yeah, Frostbite is... Smarter people than I can really tell you about Frostbite. That's not a heel spot, it's an X spot over here, Trinix, yeah. Sorry. Just gives me some experience. Doesn't heal me. So much as I hate to, I think I'm gonna dodge these encounters. No, I don't really feel like I'm getting stronger anyways from leveling, so let's just move on. Yeah, I've seen interviews about Frostbite. Hey, we're in a desert now. I like the sun effect. I don't... I, I think that makes you terrible at Money Disco. Um... <clears throat> oh, hey, David OBS. And hi, Evil Clone. Favorite comedian? I, uh, I'm gonna go with Eddie Izzard. I usually don't like comedians in general. I don't like stand-up comedy. Eddie Izzard is a very... Rare example of someone who can actually make me laugh consistently. This is bad. <clears throat> yeah, no. Um, I will always give some credit to the developers, the actual creators of Mass Effect Andromeda and Dragon Age Inquisition. Because, you know... They, uh... They, they had to make those games in that nonsense. I don't know what else to add to that. I have no idea how those games are even functional. It's so pretty. It's like a death trap, if you ask me. It's not all bad. Nice to see clear skies and breathe clean air. Care to lead the way, directional genius? It would be my pleasure. Follow me. No clue where to go, huh? Nope! The blueprint said to follow the shifting sands. See how the sand is solid and the rest is flowing? 
We walk in the same direction as those sands. We should find the workshop. Please tell me there's like a... Oh, there's a heal spot. Oh, thank God. It's exactly what I was waiting for. Uh, no, actually, I have not, Ross. <clears throat> but anyways. I was thinking about it, and you can go ahead and make fun of me for this, but I like the idea of making remakes first, and then making ga you know, original games. Oh, it's just... Now, obviously, I couldn't, you know, do that. Couldn't sell the remix. But, as a way to... You, you know me, or maybe you don't know me at all. I like to cut my teeth on easier and simpler projects, less ambitious projects, before I do the stuff I really want to do. It's a fairly normal approach for me. So, I would want to go ahead and be like, well, let's mess with this and this and that and this and that. Yeah, that is the downside. I would always want to make remakes. Always! There's so many remakes to make, you have no idea. We haven't even gotten a proper remake of Warcraft 1, which, by the way, would be another one I would add to that list earlier. Warcraft 1 is a bad game, so it counts. And it needs a proper remake. Alpha Centauri. I actually mentioned Alpha Centauri. The Onion of Dexterity. Echo, the dolphin? So I, I'm going to be honest, I have no investment in Echo one way or the other. Uh, I have actually vetoed it for a run several times because of the machine. But, I don't know, I can see that. Game my D-Make? Well, a proper D-Make would be essentially the same as a proper remake. So in short, there would be no difference to me for making a proper remake or a proper D-Make. Obviously, there is a difference, don't mistake me. I'm not saying there isn't, it's just... From a philosophical perspective, it's the same general concept. Just drag the graphics down instead of up. That's because I don't know Echo 2. Also, I'm not sure if I owe it, own it, but I can check that really quickly. Excuse me, person. So, yeah, there's uh, another party member. Also, we're up to, I think, six of eight now. Roast beef of Vital. Why did you just throw up roast beef and give it to me? I have actually played Evo Search for Eden. In fact, I've done a task of Evo Search for Eden. Okay, we're just going to leave that alone now. So, yeah, no, that that is definitely a game that could use a proper remake, especially since the core uh, fundamental mechanic of Evo is actually really, really cool. Yeah, I have literally seen speedrunners die to the machine in Echo. Speedrunners who, by definition, have memorized that game perfectly. It's just the... So, the directional controls in Echo are really bad. And um, it's easy to, like, take a corner a little bit too fast and end up getting flung into one of those death traps in the machine. So. Have we made it at last? Yeah, that was a long dungeon. Oof. Thank goodness. I think I'm carrying half the desert with me in my boots. No, wait. I forgot about the defense system. So here's our boss fight. Let's run hard. Ow! Okay. <laughs> what? Let's see how this wakes. Yeah, it's it's the greatest. Wow! Uh, okay. 
I think we're just gonna die here. I think that's actually what's about to happen. Um. He's just spamming Napalm. Oh, now he's using Cold Shot. Which he'll then follow up with Sniper Shot. Which hit me for 2,000. Yeah, okay. I think we're done here. Oh, for Christ's sakes. Okay, that... Alright, whatever. Let's see. In Mass Effect, why do you think the Galactic Community and the Council never did anything about the Batarians? That's a good damn question. I don't actually know. Politics. Not my problemism. I don't know. This is no reason to taunt since he's just going to be a dick about it. Oh, for God's sakes. Frickin' Arya. And they're dead. Nobody likes Arya. Don't be silly. That's a good question, Quentin Tarantulino. I stutter over that, I apologize. Oh, wow. That's, yeah. Anyways, um... So Don Crow had another part to his question. He said, The engine of which game, if it became more accessible, would you like to use? for more indie devs. It's a good question. I mean, Source is Source, but Source has its own issues. Whatever Paradox has been using for their recent games. Victoria 3, Crusader Kings 3, and... Uh... Imperator. I believe I'll use the same engine. I also stand by my earlier statement about the RE engine, which is pretty legit for what it does. What engine does Nintendo use? I have no idea! I thought Klauswitz was the old engine. Although you're right, it's probably just another iteration of that engine. I mean, WoW is still using the same engine they invented for Warcraft 3, technically. So, at least the boss had a different AI script. That's something. I know what you meant, Valerian. <clears throat> they retooled Paradox! <laughs> Those are great hideouts. Sandstorms and grit keep both airships and the Skyborne away. Look at all this stuff! Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you say my collection's complete? Everything's covered in dust. No one's been here in years. This is it! What is that? 
The machine and the design. Looks like my parents made a good bit of progress before. Does it work? No, it's not finished yet. This is just the framework. It's good, really. All I have to do is this. Three hours later. And voila! I can set it up and work at it in my own shop. Your shop? I thought you weren't going back there. My new shop. On my new ship. You're turning that beautiful vessel into a workshop? Of course! A flying workshop. It'll be wonderful. Do we have everything we need? One last thing. The blueprints has a list of all the parts we need to finish this. Most of it should be readily available to buy in town, except for an ether fuel. What on earth is ether fuel? I have no idea. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's nothing we ever used at the shop. I'll just have to do some research. There must be someone who knows what it is and where to get it. No use sticking around any longer. Let's head back to Rebel Base. And yeah, that's another thing. If you want to make an FPS, I mean, use id tech. If you want to make an FPS, use id tech. Let's, let's just lay that out there, shall we? There's an interesting question. What extant FPS would I make? Of course, I don't think anybody's here except for Valerian who knows about the extant enough to answer that question. Um, so Quentin Tarantulino asks, what are your biggest desires for the KOTOR remake? Only three if possible. Okay, um, biggest wants for a KOTOR remake. Okay. I would want them to rebalance the light side and dark side powers so that they're a little bit more uh, balanced, because they certainly aren't in the original game. I would want to make it so that the core combat was substantially more interesting, as opposed to being, you know, Neverwinter Nights 1.5. You know, something a little bit more Jedi Fallen Order-ish would be nice, for example. And for the third thing, I'd want them to make the ending not garbage. The entire outro of that game is problematic, and I've detailed why more than once at this point. Like, that final dungeon is not the worst final dungeon I've ever seen. Well, no, they do what I would do, DJT. I knew that, I just, I didn't know what the engine was. Yeah, me too, Ross. I mean, if you handed me the reins to a proper remake of KOTOR, I would probably still include the horrifically evil option. Because that's... It's a really good way to show how far you've fallen if you decide to go Dark Side Revan. But. I would also probably change it around a little bit so that that's the no really point of no return as far as being evil. And really lock you in on that. I'd probably give you a couple more evil ops while I'm on it. Like, there's no option... Well, no, it doesn't matter. Point being, flesh it out a bit more. And I would also add more funny evil options. Because, of course, I would. K is correct. <laughs> don't mistake, man. I don't mind playing a game where you have to be a good guy. 
but a game where you can choose to be a good guy tends to be a little more satisfying to me. Hang on a second. Yep, no, it literally just wants me to backtrack all the way there. Yeah, exactly, Blade Traval. As much as people bash on Tor, including me, the fact is Tor has some of the best options as far as dark side and light side um, ever. Like in morality gaming. You know, when it comes to uh, Infamous or Mass Effect or Dragon Age or whatever, Tor has some really good really amusing options. It also has some bad options, but it does have some really good ones, too. How many of you remember the KOTOR lore run? Not the review, the lore run. Oh, wow, that's an AoE blind. Jesus. Remember me spending 40 seconds talking about what the Force is? Or rather, what we didn't know about the Force at the very beginning? It was kind of necessary. If we're going to do a lore run of a Star Wars game, we sort of have to start with the Force. <laughs> we, have, we have to establish some baseline there. And of course, the final results into that was we have no idea what the force is because they as as djt mentions they never actually nailed it down so when we get to the star wars remake one of the initial conversations we'll have will be what is the force because we're gonna have to nail that down I mean, I'm kind of with you on that, loner. Also true, Cyclops. <clears throat> Excuse me. But anyways, the reason I bring that up is if I was handed the reins of a KOTOR remake, I would probably also sit down and think about what the Force is. Now, I probably wouldn't be allowed to do that because I'd have to adhere with the AU Force is. Which is a little bit more tied down than the EU force, but, you know. Still. Yeah, the irony is I actually have several different takes on the force that I like kind of equally. So I'm not, I, I'm actually torn if I was to, you know, codify the force. I'm not sure which one I would go with. I remember that loner. <laughs> like, obviously, we could go with the... So, the traditional... Excuse me, my traditional take on the Force is that the dark side and the light side... Jilly? What's shaking, Bacon? There you are. Sully, it's awful. The Skyborn found us. The base is under attack. I flew the ship out here, but I couldn't find you. To the ship, quickly! Um, before we do that, let's heal. I was wondering why this heal point was here. Um, did I not? I can't save. I can't save. Why can't I save? So the tradition, my traditional take on the Force is very, very simple. Um, the light side of the Force is about discipline and passivity, right? It has to be very contained and very restrained. Whereas the dark side of the force is far more about uh, emotion and aggression and activity, right? <clears throat> the light side of the force would st staunch a wound by stopping the bleeding so that the body can heal itself. The dark side of the force would heal a wound by forcing the wound closed and then forcing the tissue to reconnect. That's light, and that's dark. And that's how I'd do that. But there's also other takes on it that I like, too, so I don't know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I have an airship. 
I guess I've had one for a while. What is this thing? It's an airship. Is this the end for us? Yes. Take the wheel. You're the best pilot amongst us. I am? Hey, Saber for Wife. Can I save yet? Oh, hey, I can save. But if you're paying attention, both the light side and the dark side could be used for good or evil. Now, the dark side would be a more inclined to be used by evil people, because most evil people don't have things like discipline and patience. But by contrast, an evil light-sided master would probably be much more terrifying to face than a dark side evil master. Look who showed up to the party. General's on a roll today. Time to kill us some Skyborn scum. That's a good question, Cyclab. Oh, absolutely, Loner. No question. And yeah, there's also the occasional oddballs who could be both. And those would be the really terrifying people because they can just do whatever. But anyways, uh, let's see. Look at my question queue. I think I'm a little bit behind. I am. There's one question I haven't answered. From the Emperor himself. He says, Dear Lord, I hate you. Let's say a fictional setting is complete. The creator's done with it. Should they answer questions about things they have an answer for but are not addressed in the works? Or is it fine for them to never reveal certain things? I think if they decided to do a, so here's all the real answers, book, or, you know, interview, or podcast, then yeah, that's absolutely cool. And yes, they should do that. Rebel reinforcements, get them! Oh, that's another thing. Let's get rid of the force being sentient. Because... The Force is sentient in the AU, and it's an antagonist as a consequence. They probably don't intend for it to be, but it super is. Ow. Like, there is a living will of the Force in the AU. And it sucks, and it needs to die. They're calling us rebels. Why? In case you don't remember, no kidding, Loner. This is a uh, a village of pacifists who refuse to join the rebellion against the Skyborn, the people who are currently burning it to the ground for being a part of the rebellion. In case you missed that part. A thousand more of us will descend on you humans. Your victory is meaningless. It's the beginning of a new era. We will tolerate you worms no longer. Not quite. Yeah. Death to pacifists and to the living! Filthy pacifists. What drives a man to be filled with a heart of pacifism? I screwed up that quote. It's, what drives a man to pacifism? Is it power? Money? Lust? Or were you just born with a heart full of pacifism? You sicken me. There we go. Better quote. Oh, hey, it's the villain with a face. Yes, me. Thanks to you, I was able to discover not one, but two rebel encampments. You've exceeded my expectations. I'm quite enjoying my new rank as general. 
What does he mean? Claret? I had nothing to do with this. Didn't you, though? Once our bargain was struck, I did a bit of research on you. You had a reputation around town, did you know? A little rough around the edges, but hardworking. Kind. A girl that always goes out of her way to hell. Heartwarming. Bargain. I never kept my end. I didn't tell him anything. You didn't need to. It was far easier to simply follow the trail. People are only too happy to talk about that lovely girl who fixed up the heater. You may have failed your end of the bargain, but my ends have been achieved. I'm a man of my word. Your brother has been pardoned and released. My debt to you is paid. Oh, and one last thing. Lieutenant Shin, these citizens are guilty of treason. Execute them. Boss fight. Fear not, rebel scum. You'll die for a worthy cause. My prestige. They'll sing songs about my victory today. Everyone will know and mock me as the one true savior of everything. Ow, okay, that actually hurts. I should stop making so much fun. If she's gonna keep hitting that arm. Okay. Let's see if we can one-shot her. Not quite. Almost. I mean, Lord knows the only pacifist I can think of off the top of my head is the one in FF8. Who I kind of wish had died because he's just that unsufferably obnoxious and irritating. So, I kind of get your point. No, oh, no, no. How dare you interfere with my meteoric right. Lady, you don't even have a, sp a portrait, so... Mark my words, I'll get you yet. And my promotion, too. I just killed you, lady. Let's get back to the airship before she comes back with help. I think we need to talk. I think you're right in those hands. Um, I'm gonna keep an eye on the autopilot. Yeah, bye. Yeah, I'll be admiring the view. Bye. Would you stop looking at me like that? I'm trying to figure you out. There's nothing to figure out. It's just like he said. The Dacian Dry tried to make a deal with me while I was in prison. He wanted me to find the Red Spectre and the Rebels and report it back to him using Jack Jake as ransom. I still don't think a rebellion is going to fix anything between Skyborn and humans, but the Red Spectre, I mean you, are the first person I've seen who bothered to stand up for half-breeds. I never realized how bad their lot really is. You were doing something so... good, giving them a safe haven. Now it's all ruined because of me! Dacian tracked you down by your good deeds. It is he who has done wrong here, not you. There's gotta be something I can do to fix this. Yeah, there is. We regroup and form a new plan. I call it the Mother Load. Or wait, no. The One Piece. No, that's not it either. Damn it. Um, the Star Forge. There we go. We're good. The Skyborn have once again demonstrated their penchant for de committing atrocities. They must be stopped. I suggest we go look meet up with your brother. We need somewhere safe to regroup, if any of my people made it out of the base. Oh, right. Sorry, all the people who are hurt, or worse, it's painful to think about. They all do the risks. Now you do too. Yeah, Sullivan's actually kind of legit. He is probably my favorite character so far. He is the Yuna of this game. Points if you get it. Uh, okay. Clear it! Hey, brother, who sold me into... Yeah, I know. You guys are okay. Jake! What happened to you two? Eh, uh, 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 mm. 
Then we fought off the Skyborn Lieutenant, and now we're here. This guy's a glove. You know should not get yourself in trouble. But it's okay, I fixed everything. I've arranged a marriage between you and the evil general. Well, he could have just told me about the whole underground rebel movement thing and saved us all a lot of trouble. Oh my. Are you sure we can talk about this, Prophet? Don't mind me. Me neither. Why don't you tell me about Mom and Dad? Do you have any idea how rough it is when I was growing up? Always hoping they'd come back someday? You're only six years old. I couldn't tell you they were dead. Actually, you probably should have done that. I need to figure it out eventually. Jake, you have the sensibility of a brick. Of course, you did think marrying me off to Sullivan as part of a business deal was a good idea, so somehow I'm not surprised. This just keeps getting better and better. We were the only ones I know who made it out. The Skyborn rounded up all the half-breeds and took them away. They were hauled off to prison while... Sorry. They were hauled off to prison while most of the humans weren't so lucky. There's no stopping those butchers. Not so unstoppable. Jake, take a look at these notes. Prometheus engine? These are dads. Yeah. Have you heard of something called ether flu, if you will? Okay, you got a point there, Crazy Norse. I'll give you that. You know, I actually have... I remember when I was little, Mom and Dad used to talk about making the trip to Norden Oh my god, Nordenwald Forest. Makes up most of the big island south of the city. What a romantic sound it has to it. Hardly. It's a beautiful sight from the outside. But inside, it's infested with monsters. Hasn't every single place we've gone to, all of them, been infested with monsters? Zack, that's why I remember it. It's like a pretty weird place to get fuel. Well, thanks, Jake. Just curious, you're not going to finish the machine? I'd like to someday, but it isn't important as now, is it? Dacians kind of put a damper on your rebellion. On the contrary, it's more useful now than ever. How so? Our base may have been destroyed, but Jilly says the Skyborn were capturing our half-breed friends. I must mean they're alive somewhere. If we know where they're being kept, we might have a chance at rescuing them. I imagine the Skyborn have moved them to a higher security area. Who knows what facilities they have way at the top of the city. Right you are. I'm not sure where they're being held yet, but Clarence Machine will be all the firepower we need to free them. Probably. Can we afford the delay, though? Afraid we have a choice. We have no info, no backup, no equipment, no manpower, and we can't turn the difficulty back down to easy. Or back to... shoot. We've never been on easy. We need to test out easy at some point. And they'll have dug themselves in deep this time. You blew a hole in the wall last time. Heavens no, I'd mapped the entire prison, every guard accounted for. An entire escape route planned, a safe house in the way, the works. It's my hope that with your machine, we'll be able to get away with just blowing a hole in the wall. No, we do not, Crazy Norse. Unfortunately, it's probably something really horrific. It's my hope that with your machine, we'll be able to get away with just blowing a hole in the wall. I already said that. Wax flust. Go get some intelligence. Okay. Do we have any trouble leaving the city? Oh. You just leave that to me. We need to take the Celestial Elevator to Uptown and then head to Southbridge. Follow my lead. Yeah, imagine a rebel with a plan. So, you were talking, Crazy Nurse, about how much it pisses you off that pacifists are portrayed terribly. What tends to piss me off is rebels are usually portrayed terribly. Oh, no, they're always the big heroic types, but they're always morons who have no idea what they're doing or how they're doing it or even why they're doing it in some cases, and they have absolutely no plan whatsoever for after they win. Half the EU was founded on the principle of, uh, now what? Seriously, though. <laughs> it's really common. Yeah, it's... it's. I mean, you, you joke, Mr. Red, but that is legitimately it. An enormous amount of fiction treats it like if you kill the big bad evil person, you're good. And again, I will, one of the things I actually always liked about the EU is the fact that it followed through on how much of a mess the Rebellion made and how they really were in over their heads in making an actual galactic government function in the wake of that. It 
Someday, Junior, all the sun that the sun touches will be yours. But there's no sun down here. It's all smog. I want more. <sighs> anyway, sorry. It's getting way off topic there. Um, So let me jot down some notes before I forget about it. Yeah, honestly, I agree, Loner. You're probably joking, but if not for Mon Mothma, who was a career politician, and Admiral Akbar, who's probably the best admiral that setting has ever seen other than Thrawn, they would have been scarooed. Akbar also brought with him the Mon Cal's in general, and they brought with them a lot of legitimacy and infrastructure and all kinds of necessary things to keep an organization functional. And technology, yeah, and technology. You're absolutely right on that one, too. One of the things that pisses me off so damn much, I hate to get into this topic yet again, about the AU, is how they don't really address that question, you know? In the AU, a similar thing happens. All right, Republic's back. But rather than do anything with it, instead it's just, we're all morons. They put on the blinders. And then the First Order shows up, and it's like, well, that's a waste of everything. Why do we even have the Rebellion? Jesus Christ. The EU... Like, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna actually talk about this for a second. But not yet. Because I need to be at a point in which I'm actually doing something mindless like killing mobs in a dungeon. So give me a second here. What research did I do on Halo Wars 2? Absolutely none. Although I did that on purpose. I try, I actually try to do less research nowadays than I used to for games. Because I want to walk into them as blind as possible. I'm sorry, Blade Truffle. So, side quest. What are you looking at? Name's Atlas. Atlas? Aw. Spent most of my life being small. That ends now. I'm one step away from the world shrinker potion. Once I finish it, I'll tower over all of you. Problem is, the last ingredient is only in one spot. The forest! Yeah, okay, yep, got it. Ten Nordenwald gold petals. You got it. Let me just try some of the flowers for you. Finally, if you bring ten flowers, I'll give it the first batch. Full-sized folks shouldn't see the same effect. You'll merely get much stronger. Probably. Look like yellow flowers, but they have a distinctive glow or sparkle. Cool. Quest cat. Look around. What in God's... Oh my God, it's FF4. Ah! Um, uh, uh, the western exit of this room is the way to Nordenwald Island. Okay, let's just carefully and who is this? That's Praetor Angril, ruler up of Upper Grandmaster and everything below it. Ah, uh, the Colosseum is to my north and the entrance is to the south. Scurry on, I'm too busy to deal with concerns of peasants. Then why'd you give me directions? Alright, the Count, it's time to talk about Star Wars. And nothing but Star Wars. Everything is Star Wars. Da na 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 na. I mean, honestly, yeah, a, a, a Star Wars trilogy about the challenges of the New Republic and, I mean, the Thrawn trilogy would be awesome, but, you know, whatever. Listen, nice things are not yours. Shut up. I'm paid to be a wall, or a fence, if you will. I'm what you call a have-not. The haves are the ones who pay me to prevent any of my kind, the have-nots, from going where they go. That's actually rather accurate. Don't do it, Ross. Don't do it. I see too many kids from the slums come here looking for fame only to find themselves in two more pieces. Bernard here has seen too much death and lost his nerve. Me? I got a tingle when I lop off a limb. That's gross. It's a delicate thing like you doing in a place like this. I will smack you. Scurred no like to fight, but if scurred no fight, scurred no eat. No brawling, unless you're in the arena. 
See that green armored Skyborn? That's a Legionnaire. The rookies around here test their metal with the guards. But not Legionnaires, those guys will mess you up. What is this, FF6? Welcome to the Coliseum. We pit team against team and blah 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 blah. Let's go fight. Let's see if we're even remotely of a level to do this, shall we? This should be fun. Uh, okay, so. I've decided after some careful thought, I'm not going to rant about how dumb the sequel trilogy is. Oh, yeah. We're dead. We are... Dead. <laughs> oh, yeah. These are much higher level than we are. Don't make it bad. We can't alienate our spectators like that. Yeah, sorry about that. I will come back to that at a much higher level. Wow. That is way beyond me right now. They probably sell nice... I don't know if I can even check. Hang on, let's let's save. In case this is a bad idea. <sighs> I mean, obviously not, Zactef. I just got my ass kicked. <laughs> kicked upside down sideways. I only sold the high-level combatants. Come back when you got the key to the city. Yeah. No key to city, no superfoods for you. Yep, okay. Yep, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Can I at least use the forge? I can, actually. So, this crafting interface is not good. But let's check some stuff. So, you have three weight to work with. And, okay, so then. I thought I'd gotten some platinums. Oh my god. I do. I have two platina right now. Oh wow. Sure thing, Dr. Winter. Hang on. Okay, there. I just threw up all over my keyboard. And that's the script, which uses the hyperspace RAM. Any questions? That's interesting. So that is a weapon I can't even use yet. Whoops. No. Yeah, Underthought is... A, so what I was going to talk about is how the sequel trilogy has a lot of Underthought in it. Like, it's a little crazy how much Underthought is in the sequel trilogy. The way they treat the New Republic is just one aspect of that. Yeah, no kidding, prisoners. Hold on there. <clears throat> yeah. <clears> hmm. <throat> Hang on. Had a bit of sequel trilogy stuck in my throat. Hold on, Nancy boy. What business do you have outside the city? Oh, there, my good fellow. Sullivan William Bick Buckminster Housting Chesterford the Fourth. He is the fourth, not the third. All right, one of those uptown high society types. Yes, this morning I woke with a yearning for a hunt, and I thought to myself, well, better than the forest down yonder. You're going to Nordenwald to hunt? Are you not well in the head? Nonsense, I'm not a little worried for myself. My servants, perhaps, ought to exercise caution, but I assure you I shall be in no danger at all. Come along, servants. That idiot's coming back in a body bag. Do we care? Nah. FTL weapons have their own problems. 
Like, if you introduce an FTL weapon, you have introduced a game changer to your setting, and you need to think about that very carefully. I'm not saying you shouldn't. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it's a, it's a thing you should use very carefully. I actually spent a huge amount of time and effort designing the FTL in my setting, specifically so that it could not be used as a weapon. Unlike, say, Star Trek, which hypothetically you could just war ramp up to warp 9 and ram a planet and cause a fairly large amount of damage to the entire system. Or you can go to warp 10 and turn into a lizard. Oh god, the galaxy gun. There are so many dumb super weapons in Star Wars. The galaxy gun is honestly probably in my top five. The galaxy gun should have been a game changer. It's a freaking missile launcher that can shoot hyperspace bullets anywhere. <laughs> like, what? The Darksaber was one that didn't bother me all that much. Mostly because it was a pile of cheap crap and didn't even last its own uh, inauguration uh, flight. Like, I honestly feel like the Darksaber was kind of a parody of uh, Star Wars super weapons. Also true, Crazy Norse. Very true. Anyways, I'll go ahead and talk about Star Trek. Just for you, Ross. I actually agree Wesley is not that bad, although I didn't have that opinion until I went back through it. Which is funny, because I also don't think that Pulaski isn't that bad. Which is another opinion I didn't have until I went back through it. Both characters have the exact same problem. When most people think of Wesley, they think of early season one. When most people think of Pulaski, they think of her first episode. The Child. I was just looking around for any other things. I, I guess these are yellow? Oh, okay. Yeah, both characters were done dirty by their earlier appearances. Hey. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's formulaic. If you bring it up... There it is. I didn't even see that. Thank you, Crazy Nurse. Um, I was honestly not looking for the flower, so I didn't even catch my, my sensor. So my filter wasn't looking for that. Um, <clears throat> I gotta be re-sweep, because I wasn't looking for it. If you introduce a, new, a brand new character who is an asshole to a fan favorite, people are not going to like that character. That's, again, that's formulaic. They knew what they were doing with Pulaski. They just failed at it or, depending on how you define it, succeeded miserably. Okay, I'm not seeing any others. I'm going to hope there aren't any other ones. Have you ever seen anything so lovely? The glistening water, the softly swaying grasses, the delicate scent of flowers in the air. I've never been so enraptured. What'd you do down in that mine? Read romance novels and breathe fumes? Well, since I'm stuck looking the way I do, at least my manner and speech can be pretty, right? Come on, guys. This place is huge. Then we better start looking for this ether fuel stuff. Wharf effect... Wharf effect is actually just a mismanagement... Uh, mismanagement, excuse me. Misapplication of inverse character establishment. So, by definition, Worf Effect is bad. Because the very definition of Worf, Worf Effect is when you're using a trope wrong. I was thinking the same thing, Chris. This place is fine. And we know there's a giant polluting city right there. So, for example... So, let me explain that a little bit. Inverse character establishment is... Let's say I spend half a game establishing... Ross, 
as this super mega badass. And I don't just talk about it, I actually show it. You see Ross beating the snot out of several people that have given me issue, right? Like, let's say it's a game like this, a simple, you know, old-style, grid-based RPG, right? So let's say I'm wandering around, and there's this one enemy, and it's a boss battle. I'm like, oh god, I just, it's, oh god, I barely do it. I barely bring it down. Whew, that was rough, okay. And then I see, you know, Ross show up, and he just bodies three of them in a single fight. And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> then, well, I mean, oh, okay, admittedly, that's actually inverse character establishment right there, what I just talked about. But then if I keep establishing Ross as a character, then I have someone else just show up and absolutely curb stomp Ross. I have now established DJT's power levels as having destroyed Ross without having to actually show all of Ross uh, DJT stuff on camera. So there's a lot of ways to showcase that and a lot of ways to establish that. Wharf effect is when you overuse that. Wharf effect is when you abuse that to the point where it becomes silly. Where the joke, which is barely a joke, becomes that the only use that character has is being there to be kicked around to prove that the enemy is serious. And that's the problem. Misuse and overuse, not the trope itself. Unfortunately, Ross is going to have to fight his ancient nemesis K before he can actually fulfill his desire to gain the command aura. Once he gains the command aura, though, he's going to have a long and difficult journey in order to master it. Otherwise, the sniper shot will kill him instead of his enemies. Monsters are something else. And now there's four of them at once. You gotta be kidding me. Get back! Well, there's our new party member. Sorry, Kay. It's the only way. Eternal peace. <laughs> Relies on you destroying Kay. Or Ross. Once and for. Yeah, look at her health compared to our health, by the way. We must have the eternal calm. I think I need to get her to tank here. Holy crapola. Claire's dead. Um. Good news. She does have a stance to threat to tank, but honestly, at this point, just kill them. There's your threat. Um, I mean, 200 cubic light years is ludicrously huge. I'm not sure how much bureaucracy that would be, but that's that's pretty damn big. This is funny. I was literally just talking about uh, inverse character establishment. That is exactly what this is right here. We just got blown away by this one... Well, okay, we didn't go. We had this one boss fight, which I had to burn a lot of stuff to kill. To get the combo off. And then we have to fight four of them at once, which are effectively soloed by her. Also, she's 11 levels higher than I am. Thank you? You should know better than enter this forest with battle skills like that. Excuse me. We're just getting on fine, thank you very much. Sullivan, she might be able to help us. Ha! Ah! Pardon us, ma'am. Are you familiar with this place? I know it well enough to know you shouldn't be here. Yeah, well, unfortunately we're on a bit of a quest. Maybe you could help us find what we're looking for? We'd be gone much sooner. We could possibly bring two humans, a half-breed abomination, and... What manner of creature is that? You're not very nice. She's Skyborn, it's to be expected. Doesn't appear to be any mix of human or Skyborn. Looks like it's part monster. Hey, she's just a kid. Ah, I see I have given offense. You just noticed? I've lived in these woods many years now. I'm not used to conversing with strangers. Great, we forgive you. How about you make it up by 
Helping us through here. Uh, what's your name? I am Alda. I suppose if you're determined to travel the wood, I can escort you for a time. Oh, that'd be great. All right. I don't think we should trust a Skyborn so readily. She already helped us out big time. Alda, we're looking for something called ether fuel. Any idea where we might find it? I haven't heard of an ether fuel, but there's some ruins further in. Some of which contains remnants of ancient technology. Oh, ancient technology. Glug. The ancients were all extremely advanced. Yada, yada, yada. Wow, they full healed me after that, too. I will kill all of them. Yeah, exactly. Take a shot. I will kill all of them in my sleep. Or their sleep? Am I supposed to kill them while I'm sleeping or while they're sleeping? The dumbest distance that's been traveled in Star Trek? That's a good question. In TNG, they go beyond the limits of the known universe. In TOS, they leave the galaxy casually on an afternoon stroll. Um, in TNG, they go to the center of the galaxy. Take a pick, really. I mean, honestly. Yeah, Voyager traveled everywhere in the universe simultaneously. Twice. Which makes very little sense. If you think about it. I wasn't even going to talk about fluidic space. In DS9, they accidentally bring back a universe inside one of their runabouts nacelles. DS9 has stupid stuff, too. If you don't know what a runabout is, it's a shuttle. Not like a van, but whatever. Okay, that's bad. These guys have some health, Jesus. No, that wasn't the Q episode. In fact, I bet you can't even tell me the name of that episode. Because it's such a non-episode that most people probably forget about it. This is rough. I should probably get some experience while I'm here. Sort of skipped the last dungeon worth of experience. How big is a cubic meter? The entire room I'm in right now is probably about four cubic meters. Eh, maybe a bit bigger. It's hard to gauge that by sight, but it's not its not that many, which is my point. Which setting does FTL best? Okay, you're going to make fun of me for this. Star Wars. EU, specifically. Now, there are others that have done decent usages of, of FTL. Um, Starbursting in Farscape is a decent step. Um, Stargates, Stargates aren't exactly bad. Mass Effect system is interesting. Especially since there's actually multiple FTLs in Mass Effect. Worst FTL in fiction? Star Trek. So, I talk about underthought, right? Star Trek's FTL is really underthought. I'm not even going to talk about how inconsistent it is with itself. That's a separate problem. Warp drive as designed, even when it's being self-consistent, is nonsense. Yeah, warp speed rules are basically, you can go from one point to another fast. And that is honestly all the thought that is put into it. You will get there at the speed of plot.
Don't mistake me. I love Star Trek to death, but Warp Drive? Warp Drive exists so that the sci-fi setting can exist. That's it. That's why it's there. Now, you probably think that's an insult. It kind of isn't, because I understand the appeal. The moment you make the geography of your sci-fi setting matter is the moment you have to acknowledge a very, very, very basic problem. Space is big. Really, really big. Real quick, someone do me a favor. How long would it take to go from Earth to Pluto at just one C? feels low, but I'll believe you. Four point six hours. Okay, there you go. So <laughs> Yeah. The reason I bring that up is that may not sound particularly long, but if you were going the speed of light, it still takes you four hours just to go a portion, essentially halfway across this one system, right? That's it. And obviously that increases the further out you get and yada yada yada. But the really messed up thing is it's... You have to accommodate for two completely separate scales in your FTL. Because let's say that you can go warp, like in Star Trek, right? What's preventing you from warping into something? Oh, by the way, thank you, Eclectic. The very fact that you have ships that move at warp means you, by definition, have to have computing skills. Your your your, your computers, your your the, the the circuitry of your ship has to be able to operate at faster than the speed of light. Because your sensors have to be able to take in that info that quickly, and the faster your ship goes the faster your computers have to go. Then there's all the other problems that that builds in. We've seen them use warp drive as a vil as a weapon once in all of Star Trek. And even that, it was kind of a dumb episode and poorly used. But the reason I bring that up is because if warp drive can be used as a weapon, it should be. Because it's a regular tool that everybody has. Everybody has warp drive in Star Trek. So you can't tell me of all the people of all the either desperate or uncaring or violent whatever people, that of all of them, nobody would decide to use warp drive as a weapon. Yeah, I was referring to the Picard maneuver, but picture this for a moment. Get a freaking cargo ship, aim it at a planet, engage warp, you know, set a timer, engage warp drive in five minutes, beam off the ship, watch the fireworks. Never mind what you could do to a star with something like that. Yeah, exactly. Imagine the Maquis, who, I remind you, were pushed into genocide. I'm sorry, they were pushed by genocide? How do you phrase that? We're being genocided. You cannot tell me that the Maquis would not get desperate enough to start doing tactics that otherwise would be considered out of bounds. That's the problem when you're world building. If you invent something as possible, you have to acknowledge that somewhere, somehow, someone's going to use that, and you have to accommodate for that. Because if it's possible at all, someone's going to do it. This is exactly why the EU made hyperspace ramming impossible, by the way. Uh, what am I doing? Healing. Yeah, I wasn't even going to talk about how you could tie in replicators and transporters to do even more horrific stuff. Oh yeah, that's another thing. Star Trek, that is to say the Federation, has casual access to time travel. Which is made even worse by the fact that they have access to time travel. Now you're probably thinking, why'd you just say the same thing twice, Lore? Because one of those things is here, 
And one of those things is here. Look, I like a good time travel story. But the moment you introduce time travel to your setting, you have introduced a problem. Because if it's possible, then someone, somewhere, years, or centuries, or millennia ahead of you is going to figure it out way better than you do. Ooh, a dragon here. I don't know what that is, but cool. Oh, okay. It's another of those four bosses here. Sure they are, Traxia. Sure they are. Oh, those hit hard. Oh, God, please stop hitting the tank. He's dead. Oh, my God. These are just trash mobs in here. Let's get some AoE healing going out here. I don't think so, Crazy Nor. Sorry, I was thinking about that. I'm sure one of the books has, but in canon, no. I'm not even going to talk about the fact that most Star Trek ships are powered by antimatter. Specifically, the matter antimatter explosion, which generates such a. <laughs> ludicrously <laughs> huge amount of power that it's actually br it breaks other aspects of the setting I'm not joking when you have the power generation that they do parts of the setting literally don't make sense because that is an absolutely insane amount of power in fact so okay someone earlier asked are we going to fix the warp drive in uh, in the rewrite kind of but yes, is the answer to the question. Jesus, she has a lot of health. That's a very good question, Mike D'Amato. They obviously have a lot of it because they literally just put it in their missiles. Do you know a proton torpedo is an antimatter bomb? Think about how much damage a proton torpedo should probably actually do. Anyways. <clears throat> so, yeah, no, we're, we're scaling back and up the FTL at the same time. In short, we've just added a few fairly basic limitations to the FTL. I honestly doubt it's ever even going to show up on camera, because it doesn't need to. But the but the general idea is no ramming. No uh, no certain actions. You can't do certain things while in warp, etc, 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 etc. But ironically, we're actually introducing two warp scales. Warp scale and transwarp scale. Warp scale is almost one-to-one -one what Star Trek actually has. Warp one to nine, you know? Transwarp is kind of more what STO does with it. And Transwarp is how you can go way faster than uh, what most of them can. You're probably thinking, why? Because we ran into an interesting problem when we were doing the Trek rewrite. Geography. Some of you may know that Lore Reloaded did a video talking about the Romulans and the Ferengi going to war. What you may or may not know is that as part of that, he and I also did some fairly decent amount of research on the geography of Star Trek. One of the things we came across is that Federation space is so huge that at maximum warp, warp 9, it would take about four to five years to cross it. At warp 9. So, that's unacceptable. Wow, that... Uh, no. Warp 9 means... Someone look up how many hundreds of thousands of times faster than the speed of light Warp 9 is really quick, please. I don't have it in front of me, and it also changes depending to on what you're looking at, because they never locked it down, but it's much, 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 much faster than that. Yeah, Voyager got up to 9.97. It's a logarithmic scale, so the more uh, decimals you put up there, the bigger that is. Like, the difference in speed between warp 9, 8 to 9, 
and nine to nine point one is 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 a bigger it's a bigger uh, it's a bigger speed increase. Nice, more platina. And yeah, ten equals infinity, because duh, exponential increase into infinite. That makes sense. Twenty-one thousand, according to Space Cadet, and seven hundred twenty-nine, according to Loke. And you're probably thinking, duh, that's that can't be right. No, the problem is Star Trek has changed its mind about what its warp speeds are multiple times. So there's like the stuff that they officially codified in about mid-TNG, you know, when the technical manuals came out. And then writers started violating that. So, thanks. Thanks for that, writers. Anyways, I'm getting off topic. The point to all of this is the transwarp is going to be factors faster. Now, fact, when I say factors faster, I mean, essentially, Star Wars speeds. You can cross the galaxy, the whole galaxy in Star Wars, in about a month. And that's about what we're using as our overall uh, guidance for FTL, uh, excuse me, for Transwarp in the Trek rewrite. You can go really fast. Now, you're probably thinking, what about Voyager? I wouldn't worry about Voyager. <laughs> Thank you, Anosians. Thank you, Kay. I don't want to give away too much of Voyager. It's the show I've actually looked at the most. It's the show I've done the most work for, even though we're starting on Enterprise. <laughs> See you around, Crazy Nurse. Have a good one. But yeah, no, it's it, it's it is a problem that had to be solved. So there's ways to solve it. That's the thing. I was talking about Evo. I was talking to Evo about that recently. The way I write, you haven't given me. It. Oh wait, no. You have given me feedback, never mind. No, the problem is I'm still streaming and not working on the track rewrite. That's the real problem here. Um, the, um, I tend to think of writing as a logic puzzle. Okay, so what are my objectives, right? Like we were playing Talos Principle just a few weeks ago. What am I trying to accomplish? Okay, well, I need this pin to attack here. I need this to, to, to connect to here. And then this to not interact with this, and I need this to not interact with this, right? So there's my objectives. How do I solve all of those simultaneously? And that's how I tend to think of writing. I think of it like a puzzle. So when it comes to something like FTL, it's like, okay, how do I solve FTL? Well, there's lots of ways to solve FTL, but then you got to think, what is going to be affected by the changes to FTL? Voyager was one of the first things we thought of. Um, obviously, the size of the galactic space and the difference between the haves and the haves nots is also a fairly substantial thing that needs to be taken into account. So, all of that stuff, all of those objectives need to be fulfilled simultaneously. This also means that we had to t t decide what we were doing with the Dominion and the Wormhole. Now, the thing is, I think... Reloaded agrees with me on this. I, I wouldn't mind your opinion on this, though. Uh, I think that the increased transwarp speed doesn't diminish the power of the Wormhole. Because the Wormhole isn't you know, a few weeks or a month's journey, the wormhole's instantaneous. Right? So, <laughs> there is still a fairly strong and useful benefit to, to the wormhole, both for the Federation and to the Dominion. Now, the catch there is we have to decide some other things. That actually introduced a problem, because the Dominion War occurs over about three seasons in actual DS9. Probably going to be more in our version of DS9. So, three seasons, which is three years, which is plenty of time for them to send reinforcements. So why don't they? So we had to answer. So again, it's like a puzzle. All right, now we have to solve that question. How do we solve the fact that they don't send reinforcements? That is a solved equation. We've already figured out an answer to that one. <laughs> I hope you like that one. That we, we, we spent some time on that one. But you get the idea, right? In this case, the wormhole is... I will go ahead and give away something. The wormhole is fully artificial. It was actually crafted by the Prophets, specifically. 
as a failed attempt to ascend. The So some of you may have heard of me talk about the high table and the low table, even though those are unofficial terms, but I keep using them because it's the only term I got. So the prophets wanted to join the high table. And generally speaking, the requirement for joining the high table is just being advanced enough in order to do so. You know, being at a stage of development and progression to be accepted at the high table. They didn't want to wait. So they decided to just skip ahead. And the wormhole was involved with that experiment. It didn't work. So the prophets have been kind of locked in the wormhole in their own kind of quasi-dimensional space ever since. They have some ability to interact with tangible space, but not to the same extent that they used to. Technically, they actually went down on the tech tree because of this. So the profits are actually very limited. But at the same time, they have the potential to be substantially more limitless. I think it's a nice little dynamic. But yes, the only two species we know for total certainty at the high table, uh, excuse me, the three species we know for certainty at the high table are the Q, the Elorians, and the Iconians. That is absolutely true, Mike Tomano. And wormholes could be artificially created. That is a true statement. Although, nothing in the setting is anywhere near at the advancement level that needs to be for that. So what about the paw rates? It's a good question. It pretty much, yeah, okay. Exactly, Blade Ball. The high table is the next tier up in terms... So we've got interstellar society, right? Interstellar culture. The high table is like interdimensional culture. It's, it's just... It's, it's that, but another step up, right? That's the vague idea. Sure, my Kamana. We'll call it the intergalactic table. Why not? <laughs> Doesn't matter to me. This place is really taxing my HP, I'll tell you what. Yeah, all does there's a fire emblem term. Yes, Justin. Q are probably the original uh, founders of the high table. But um it's the, the Q, the Elorians, and the Iconians are the only ones we've decided are part of the high table. There might be more. Haven't thought about it yet. That's probably going to come down to individual species as we go through the shows. There's a Fire Emblem term for what Alda is. And I can't think of it, but it's a big, strong guy with slow stat growth whose entire purpose is to be there to carry you while you catch up. We did decide there's no mirror universe, or more accurately, there is a mirror universe, but it's not what you're thinking it is. Jagan, that's him. That's him. Yeah, she is a total Jagan, and I'm not sure I like that. Especially since she is very slow. She usually starts off with low threats, so things like that happen. How close are the Borg to the high table? So I don't want to spoil, but... A major plot thread that will be crossing three separate shows is about how desperately the High Table is afraid of the Borg. One thing I've been adamant about from the very beginning is I wanted the Borg to be exactly as terrifying and horrifying as they really should be. Trust me, they are. They can't, Alex. They lack the ability to. Yeah, the Borg are, are the death wall that's slowly closing in. That's what the Borg are. Nice slow advance. They're very methodical. They are very thorough. And they just very 
very slowly advance, and nothing stops them. Yeah, like a glacier. That's a good size gun gun. I would agree with that. Yeah, the Borg are the hyperpower of Star Trek. The Borg, I, mentioned, I remember I mentioned earlier that Warp Drive was one of the earlier discussions we had. The Borg were another one. I've talked about this before. If you're going to write a setting, real, real, real talk here, real advice. If you're going to design a world and you, you know, want to take it seriously and actually do a good job of it, then you need to think about the things that affect everything first. Start with those, right? So for the Trek rewrite, we had to sit down and establish what are the things that are going to interact and interfere, interfere with everything else in the setting. And, I mean, the Borg and the Q were two of the earliest things we thought about for that. Now, we had to, ironically, nerf the Borg a little bit, because otherwise they'd just win. But one thing we decided pretty early on, and this is going to directly answer Cyclops' question, is could the Borg assimilate the Q? And the answer is yes. That's the problem. The Borg advanced to a point where they can't be stopped without being made unstoppable. So, what about Species 8472? Ejected entirely. Don't exist anymore. We don't need discount Daleks in the setting. Guinan is an Elorian cross. The Q don't have physical forms to assimilate, no. Q have plenty of energy going on, though. We are absolutely nerfing the Q. That was something that was also kind of a mandatory part of the early statement there. Is there anything that presents a threat to the Borg? Yes. Forgive me for not sharing what it is. I've thought long and hard about how to defeat the Borg because I want it to be something satisfying and, you know, sense makey. And so forgive me for not spoiling that right here on a random stream. But, yeah. Anyways. We'll deal with the Borg when we get there. That'll be in Voyager, consequently. Yep, it, it, it's Blade Turval guessed it. Blade Turval gave it away. Damn it, man. Man, I don't trust that, Justin. I'm nervous. I'm nervous that people are going to see the answer and just be like, really? That's it? Anyways, why do we start talking about the board? Oh yeah, someone at, we, we were talking about the high table, because we were talking about warp speed, that's where it was. Because we were talking about the the drifting topics, we were talking about the profits. So yeah, someone asked about the paw rates. Um So I don't remember what we decided with the paw rates. I know we decided to do something with the paw rates. But I don't think we've codified it yet, probably because we're not at DS9 yet. But the ideas I remember most distinctly we were tossing around was either making the paw rates a completely separate species and just have them do their own thing, or, and I like this idea a bit better, have the paw rates be a completely separate faction who, rather than being pure evil, is just more invested in uh, interfering with the other races. So, if you're paying attention, earlier I mentioned that the Prophets have a great deal of difficulty interacting with the physical plane now, because of their screwed up experiment, right? So they can't just reach out and be like, hey, what's up? You know, they're not the cue, to put it into simple terms. So one of the ideas uh, we both had was to make it so that the prophets are more interested in just not interacting with anything, and the pirates are. The night comes, we should camp for now. Uh, the, the horror, the forest comes alive with unspeakable horrors when darkness falls. Yeah, we've been getting the ass beaten out of us anyway, so I'm okay with that. Ironically, TOS has had the least thought put into it in terms of rewriting, but that's kind of deliberately. 
you're probably thinking, but why, Lore? Because rewriting TOS is going to be the easiest by far. Because TOS is going to be the easiest thing to just eject stuff entirely. So much of TOS doesn't fit track. Never mind the rewrite track. So TOS is going to be a whole lot of gutting stories in order to just try and turn them into... Let me walk that back. Gutting stories establishing what the bones of a specific script is and then trying to make a new story based on those bones. That's going to be the approach we use for most of TOS. And we have a couple of story arcs designed for TOS. Not many. Just a couple. There's going to be the obvious one, which is the Klingons. And we're probably going to do something with time travel. And by probably, I mean definitely. In fact, I even know which episodes it's going to be. You have to map out the time travel first. But other than that, we haven't gone into a lot of specifics. I, I mentioned that idea to Reload it. He kind of liked that, Ross. We kind of liked the idea that maybe Kirk was before they started calling them different captains. So he really was just the captain. And, like, maybe historically people attached that to him, like, as, as a legendary title kind of thing. You know, the captain. As opposed to fleet captain, which would be Picard, or Commodore, which would be Cisco, or science captain, which would be Janeway. I was even tossing around the idea that maybe he was offered the title of Fleet Captain in the movies, and he was like, nope. So Archer is... Archer's a political appointee. He's not really what I would call a captain on any level. He probably has the technical rank of captain. Whatever that's worth. Oh, almost missed that one. But he doesn't really have command experience. And he's not doesn't really have diplomatic experience. He just happens to be well connected. Yeah, he's captain in name only, exactly. Now the goal, before you hate me, the goal is for Archer to grow into it. The goal is for Archer to have an arc of growing into being a good captain over the course of Enterprise, right? And so he will eventually reach a stage where we he, we can call him a captain and not add an asterisk to the title. And we've been sowing seeds for that early on, and we plan to keep doing so over time. But he's the he's the only one... Well, excuse me, that's not true. Uh, he and, Vo and Voyager's captain, Janeway, will be the two captains who are not captain captains at the start of their arc. It was Blade Traval, and then they decided to make him Janeway 2 for some reason. Anyways, I've been entering the QAQ for a second. Let's see here. Um... Which is more dangerous a power source? The Singularity Black Holes or the Antimatter Systems? That's actually a good question. I don't know. I mean, those are both terrifying power sources if you think about it. What, what would you rather? Be imploded to death or exploded to death? Make your pick. This is starting to hurt. I need to get a heal spot soon. That's not what I said to do, controller. Um, and this is just up here? Yeah, okay. Which one hurts less? That's a good question. Probably the antimatter. Yeah, would you rather have cyanide or arsenic? Um, how would the Borg do in 40k? So the Borg would lose in 40k just like everything would lose in 40k. But I should probably mention that the Borg are one of the very, 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 very few races that could probably hang in 40k for, you know, a bit. Thank you, Klaus. As always. And yes, this is in-game music, whoever asked that. Much appreciate. Thank you. If you know what you want to put that towards, do please let me know. Like, the Borg would probably do fine in 40k right up until they encountered a Chaos God and and things would go badly. Make yourself comfortable. Go ahead and get a fire going. For your own sake, do as I say and stay here. Will Guinan stop being a ridiculous magic character who just knows everything? Uh, I haven't decided anything specific for Guinan other than her connections to Q. So, I don't know, would be the answer to the question. 
Uh, looks like Dragon Trihexia from the pictures I've been seeing. Oh, gonna be tough to get some rest tonight. Yeah, it probably doesn't help. We're about to be murdered in our sleep. Oh, come on. She called me an abominable half-breed. She said I looked like a monster. She may be blunt, but look, we have to wait the night out anyway, so we might as well make the best of it. Besides, we might have been dog food if not for her help. Help yourselves. I'm not a chef, so don't complain about the taste. Thanks. Um, um. Say, Alda, I have to ask, what's a Skyborn warrior doing living way out here? On the ground? You could say I'm looking for answers. Answers to what? To the questions no one else was asking. How much do you know of my people? Well, you have wings, and, um... Hardly anything, really. They all live at the highest tier in the city. Most humans never even see it. Some things never change. Skyborn take any measure to protect the status quo, so much so that it's become inseparable from who we are. I'm not sure I'd follow. Each and every Skyborn is trained in combat, earning your battle armor as a rite of passagehood into adult passage into adulthood. While humans have focused on technology, we have developed more and more efficient ways of destroying any enemy and keeping him defeated. And while humans place high merits on scholars and entrepreneurs, prestige in Skyborn society is extremely hierarchical, based almost completely on your military rank. Now, if you pay attention, this was actually mentioned earlier with our other uh, Dracian or whatever his name was. He actually talked about that. So, that tracks. Also, the lieutenant was primarily interested in her promotion, etc. Was it always like this? Who were we before the war with humankind? I mean, there must be Skyborn history books or, or something. Perhaps. I've never seen them. Well, that's where I would start with How Are You instead of Out in the Woods. It's not so simple. My own feelings on the subject are complex. I fear I cannot explain them easily. You see, there's this one boy. Perhaps I can relate to you a story which will better illustrate my point. Several years ago at the Stormrook Legion training facility. Alda, hey, a person with a thing. Today's the day, final exam. You ready for it? As ready as I can be. If you want to practice, we've got some time left. I'm not too worried about it. After all, you're first in our class. I'm a close second. Surprised the instructors paired us up. Our seems fair. Yeah, talk about good luck. I'm gonna put you later, okay? I have to drop off my thesis for Instructor Caldus. Getting a little close, aren't you? I'm a fighter, not a writer. Alright, I'll see you later. And now we play as the Death Doom. Destructinator. The All Devouring. Wow, that is extraordinarily Queen Zeal music. Alda, how's it going? Ready for final exam? Oh, hi, Filbert. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. Oh, surely not for the likes of you. I mean, you're the best blade slinger of us all. Like a divine whirlwind of steel. Uh-huh. If you need help, anything, don't hesitate to call. No matter what. Absolutely anything for you, goddess. Just, uh, stand there for me. Yeah, that's stand- stay there. I command it. Then by your will, I shall stand here till my legs give out. Heart. Nope. Not dealing with that nonsense. I'm gonna smash some dirt stompers the moment I get out of here. I've had enough of dealing with their filth. I sure hope I don't have to fight Ryler and Cup. Combat someday. That guy's already a master combat mage, and just about everyone else is a total novice. I have a little confidence. We'll get to his level someday. I'm sure of it. Some advice. Stay off the Varna Vintage Reserve the night before the final exam. Blech. Good morning, Instructor. Here's my thesis. Ah, good. Ah, it seems rather short, don't you think? Sorry, Instructor. I couldn't find much reference material. Most of what I wrote is just my own conjectures and observations. Ah, Miss Kim's ancient Skyborn history is a completely irrelevant topic. I've been trying to dissuade you from focusing on it for the last year. How can it be irrelevant? Besides, I wanted to choose a subject that hasn't been done to death. Everybody else was writing about the war with the humans. Aye, and you should have followed the examples of your classmates. 
The Grand, Minister, the Grand Minister of War is the zenith of our civilization. There are enough examples of martial prowess and tactical genius from the war to write a thousand papers. So apparently this is the World War II of this setting. What? We can't get away from it in fiction. But instructor, is no one curious about the old ways? Our people have been around longer than one war. The one book I was able to find mentioned glorious battles and far-off lands in another race. Cadet Kims, cease this talk at once. Instructor... You show much promise, Alda Kims. For your own sake, never mention this again. If you don't want to accept my advice, then consider it an order. Yes, sir. At least you follow orders. Sir? Just watch yourself. Your curiosity hasn't escaped the Academy's notice. I expect your loyalty will be tested in the final. Think of your concern, Instructor, but you need not worry. I know I'm going to ace the final. Definitely not an evil organization. We got this. Alda, is everything okay? Oh, I'm just worried about my paper. Caldus is gonna hate it. In that case, I have just the thing to cheer you up. You do? Uh-huh. It's a surprise. Come with me. Is that for me? Do you like it? The glaive! Riker, thank you. It's incredible. I've never been given anything half as nice. Yeah, well, I want my partner well-equipped. Oh, exam's gonna start. Wait, before we go, there's something I... Senior students, please report to the Coliseum. The final exam begins shortly. I better get up there. T-minus ten, Pillars of Snow. Oh, Pillars of Snow, what do you want to put that sub towards? You never answered me. Headmaster, you may proceed. Recruits, before you lies the trial of arms, your final exam. Inside, your skills in the most honorable art of combat shall be tested. Be prepared to face monsters of most nefarious breeds, cutting traps to snare the wary, unwary, excuse me, and cross swords with the toughest foe of all, the Skyborn Warrior, each other. It's really talking this up, isn't it? It'll be easy. Your superiors will be watching. Prove yourself able warriors and you shall earn your armor. Fail and remain a mere cadet for another year. The pair who reaches the Empress's altar first shall receive the highest honors. Service under the command of the Centurion, the right hand of the Empress herself. Without further ado, let battle commence. Back around the clock. Speed is of the essence. Expecting a test on sheer prowess alone. A foolish of me. Indeed, just as important as strength is guile. Not to worry, I've studied up on these tests. We can help ourselves out by picking up bonus points throughout the maze, as well as recovery nodes if we're finding ourselves overwhelmed. It's actually timed. Interesting. I assume they were finding pieces of it for miles around. By miles, I mean light years, space cadet. That's a lot of attacks. Yeah, she has the same attacks. I was just thinking about that in Oceans.
The fact that it's a 30 minute timer also makes me wonder. Like, that's a long frickety time. And I keep getting experience nodes, which is even stranger. Like, why? Yes, but most Princess Peach sections are different. Like, this is just another chunk of gameplay, you know? I don't know, we'll see if it actually has any impact. They don't seem to stop for anything. It's its own problem. And he's down. Enjoy the stuff, Space Cadet. And the going through time, apparently. It's terrifying. Hmm. I mean, you could stupid... Hmm. Stupid Bruce force, brute force them, Zach Daff, but I don't know, that's kind of up to you. But that doesn't. Oh, okay, I'll do this thing. I love these tight corridors with these terrible controls, by the way. trying to backtrack on purpose and I'm failing at it which is really irritating, whatever Oh, that's just my inventory. That's and we're dead. Okay. Nope, that's not good. That, what changed? What changed? saved somewhere in that nonsense. Uh. Well, 
That's interesting. Huh. Okay. Control is doing nothing. Neither control is doing anything. Unskippable cutscenes. I'm going to chew on something for a minute. I also need to grab a fresh drink. So I'll be right back. I'm muted. The shame Alex isn't here. I wanted to ask him something. So here's a question for those of you who've been present. There's a big scene earlier. Oh my god. We found the blueprints, but the rebels have, have been... The pacifists, excuse me, have been attacked. They're all dead. What do we do? What do you think about that scene? It's actually like three scenes, but whatever. You get the idea. That's what I thought. Oh. Speed runs this game. No, I, I actually agree with you, Anosians. Part of why I brought it up. You always say sweets. What do you mean when you say sweets? I demand deets. Deets of sweets. Yeah, but what is candy, exactly? There are so many different ways candy can manifest. I 
just notice we're not getting experience from these either. Not that there's any reason to, it's just interesting to note. Mr. Ed, I'm afraid you're fired. Reason? Reason for removal from employment. Inability to answer a simple question. Right. Yeah, but what the hell is a sweet? Specifically. Precisely. Exactly. Don't tell me you're getting candy. You know how many things qualify as candy? Chocolate-covered cockroaches are candy. It's like saying I'm gonna read a book. What the hell's a book? guys. Yep. Oh, here's the fight we died on. Whatever. Just keep attacking, I guess. And die. Cool. That's, that's cool. Oh, so you're going to a bakery shop. See, that's different. You know what? Yeah, that's a good way to put that, DJ, too. Right. I love how those two spells have the exact same animation, by the way. That's good to know, Ross. Can I get someone to murder Ross just really quick, please? Just, just make it quick. I, I don't care. Yeah, just... As long as he's dead, that's the only part that matters. Yeah, that's why I was going for it in Oceans. I could have hit it before that fight, but I was pretty sure I could manage that fight without it. Alex, you're here. I got a question for ya. So, I've heard a lot of different answers to this question over the years, and I'm always curious of what answers people give, so... Don't take this as some kind of attack or weirdness, it's just literally I'm curious of the answer. In this case, the question is... Why did you put this game on the list? You are effectively the only person who donated for this. Everyone else was a dealer's choice.
So you're the only one I have to ask this. Yeah, but we don't know what kind of sweets, Mr. Red, so that's just not helpful. I mean, salties are a thing. Popcorn, peanuts, stuff like that. That's usually the salties territory. You know, I was thinking about this earlier. It almost irritates me, the fact that I can't heal. But it makes perfect sense. After all, there's only two healers in the world. Neither of these yahoos are it. That's a valid answer, Alex. Kind of an unusual one, but a valid one. We did it, we're the first ones here. Was there ever any doubt? Guess we're supposed to go in there, come on. Congratulations, cadets. You've done well. Only one final challenge stands between you and glory. Kill each other! Centurion? I hereby command you, kill each other. <laughs> Alda, I, I can't. It's an order. Well, that's messed up. It was the ultimate test of obedience, and I passed. My future secured, my superiors showered me with praise. All it cost was the life of my dearest friend. I felt nothing but an inexorable tide of guilt, and the shadow of a monumental failure I could not name. As time passed, my doubts grew. Somewhere along the way, order stopped mattering. I became unfit to serve the Centurion, and I no longer cared. I left the city in search of answers and have never returned. That's a terrible story! I am not proud to tell it, but I hope you've gained some insight into the ways of my people. Actually, yeah. So have you found any? Answers, I mean. Phew, as I said, I'm a poor scholar at best. Well, there's lots of ruins out here. Maybe you'll find something useful. Hmm. We ought to rest. Good night, Claret.
I swear to God, I will murder you, Mr. Red. Ultra murder. Let's see. I have some 99% chocolate that I could call sweets. And I think that's actually it right now. Okay, in fairness, that's not really sweet. That That's a fair point. I don't think I'm going to finish tonight unless this game's even shorter than I think it is. I am going to start avoiding encounters, and I'm sincerely debating turning the difficulty down to easy. The combat is not engaging. I don't think it's negative territory. And I don't think the number of encounters is bad. I just think there's nothing there. It's something I've talked about a lot lately, even. It's not designed. There's no design to it. And that's fine. That's better than bad. But it is absent. That's all I have to say about it. It's Final Fantasy 1, or Dragon Quest 1, you know? It's there. That's an interesting question. Maybe I should look at my review on DQ1. See what I wrote down back then. Get some of that precious case law going. Um, a rating of 1 to 10. How stupid is the Academy for sacrifice sacrificing one student per graduation? Hmm... I'm going to have to go with one, one Tarkin out of ten. I should see if those are the one I think they are. Yep, permanent increases of stats. That depends on which continuity you're talking, Blade Tavall. And which writer, if we're being honest. Yeah, but yeah, this is a very stupid Sith thing to do. There you go, one out of Sith. That's actually a better way to phrase that. Damn it, Melkor Blade. Always one-upping me, but you're right. It's a one out of Sith. Hey, Valerian. You missed the stupids. That's their formal name. Ooh, more platina. And I can make that glaive now if I felt like it. Exactly, Lord Haramon. You get it. Six point five hours? We're past that already. Granted, I tend to play both slower and faster than some people, so that's whatever. Well, I need to do this anyways for testing purposes. I do think enough work has been put into the difficulty setting that I'm not gonna ding it. Even though it does change the health and the damage, it changes enough other things that I'm okay with it. If nothing else, we actually saw how much it changed the boss script, so that's nice. Be interesting to see if easy changes the boss script. Yeah, we've been playing pretty leisurely today. Not really on purpose. Yeah, make sure to get your guesses in. Here's a question. So we're in the forest, right? How many dungeons are after this? Because so we had several kind of back to back there. We had the cave, yay. We had the cave and then the mountain and then the desert back to back to back. And now we're in the forest. And the past, if you want to call it that. Hmm. 
Yeah, it feels weird. In a normal RPG, I'd feel like I'm still in the intro, but I have a feeling I'm further than that. Mm. Oh my, look at this place. It seems to go on for miles in all directions. Yeah, it's quite easy to get lost down here, but if we're diligent about remembering landmarks, we have nothing to fear. Oh god, is this the Sky Tower in FF1? It is interesting that the explore points seem to give more experience than the enemies. I found myself wondering why the enemies even exist in this game. I know that sounds like a strange statement for an RPG, especially a JRPG, but... Honestly, like... Why are they here? They are very not worth it in terms of experience and loot. And they are very draining on resources. They're completely avoidable. Like, I was Korean methoding for a while there until it became obvious that it was just a waste of time. Now, maybe we'll fall behind the green line, I don't know. Or, sorry, if I fall behind the red line, let me say that correctly. Yeah, it, it might literally just be another artifact design problem. There's... it's it's an RPG. RPGs have ran... well, have encounters. So there's encounters. That's that's a thing. So hang on. There's a there's a throne for the dragons, a throne for the whatever those are, and then a hmm, throne for the other things. <laughs> And then there's a throne for whatever those things are, too. There's a lot of thrones in here. I mean, yeah, if I have to cheat, which I sincerely don't think I will, but if I do end up running into the red wall, I'll be fine. I'll just cheat in 90 billion of everything and crush everything. It's a, yeah, like you say, it's an RPG maker game. I got this, yo. Anyways, boss time. This is as far as I've ever ventured. The great beast Fafnir seems to be guarding something of great import. But perhaps now with allies I'll have the strength to slay him! Yeah, I noticed that, Blade Chaval. And honestly, it was probably for the betterment, too. Okay, so let's go ahead... This. All sorts of things. I mean, I think we all agree it's pretty stupid, Gum Gum. <laughs> I don't think anyone's arguing with you on that. Here there be dumb, yo. down some thoughts before I move on here.
Okay. I should just codify these, shouldn't I? You know, every time I review a game like this, I hope the person who made it never sees the review. I always feel bad, you know. But that's the HUD up to date as of now. It's also all my outstanding thoughts. If anybody has any suggestions, I am as always listening, but that's where I am right now. Well, the head on dev was actually cool. I still felt bad for giving him uh, negatives to his game, because... I mean, why wouldn't I feel bad about it? I don't know what else to add to that. Of course I feel bad about it. Oh, wow, look at this. I've never seen anything like it. I have in a junk heap. The thing just looks silly. No, no, look at these joints. They're nearly seamless, but they can still rotate. Looks sad. That's actually true. I'll agree with you, though. For an RPG Maker game, this is actually probably one of the better ones I've played. That might be a low bar, but it's still true. It looks sad. Can we polish it up a bit before we go? Master. At last you have come. Long have I awaited this day. Uh, what day is it? An Earth child has returned. Why is it looking at me like that? Such time has passed. I must tell you of your kind, Earth Child. But I don't have a kind. No, not anymore. On Once this land floated high above the surface, it was home to an race known as the Earth Fae. They were a varied people, some transient, some eternal, some playful, some terrible as all fair want to be. They were the Earth's own children, the first to be born into this world. And in time, a younger race followed. Those who called themselves humans. The Fae watched the humans from afar, as the young race made war and shed the blood of its own kind, yet continued to advance. That such flawed creatures can flourish both astonished and frightened the ever unchanging Fae. The Fae saw humans forge the very bones of the earth into tools and machines which did their bidding. Envious of their creations, the Fae gave life to the first of their servants, golems, modeled after human creations powered by Fae magic. While strong and obedient, these possessed only an imitation of true intelligence. It was not long before the Fae developed a more ambitious design. They lured humans from their homes with spells of glamour and poured Fae magic into their souls and bodies, reforming them in accordance with their desires. Thus a new race was born. Skyborn! These the Fae deemed superior to all but themselves. The young Skybor worshipped the Fae in return and delighted their creators with their intellect and passion. The winged Skyborn, however, were still humans in part. As they grew in number and 
are, they grew restless. They envied the freedom of the true humans and begun to resent their fey masters. Skyborn's discontent grew. One day they unleashed their, <laughs> unleashed their frustration upon a human settlement, destroying it. In doing so, they had realized the full extent of their own power to screw up their throat. The bloodlust of the Skyborn, once awakened, could not be sated. They were far too powerful to be ruled, and they turned on their creators. The Fae realized their mistake too late. In their pride, they had given birth to their own demise. Not even the Fae Lord Qualon could stop the slaughter. With Qualon's defeat, the magic of the Fae Lands bled out and sank beneath the clouds. And that has been the end of the race known as the Fae until now. I have waited ages to impart that story should the earthen fay come again. Now my mission is complete. Wait, don't go yet. I wish you well, Earth child. It's gone. I've never heard in any of this. Nor I. That story disturbs me. These ruins must be hundreds of years old. I wonder how long all that took place. How long ago that all took place. That's all you guys can say? Jaska. Aw, and he gives her a hug. I'm so sorry. My kind. I know. This just proves how despicable people can be. All oh, humans! Uh, Skyborn should be killed! Both Skyborn and... Oh, there you go. Both of them. We should just wipe out the... Everyone just... just etch sketch. That's not what I meant. Don't you see? I have a kind. What? Well, my life I believed I was some kind of horrible accident, but I might actually be something. No comment. It's more than I ever dared to hope for. I'm happy for you. How old are you again? I feel a great shame. I had no idea the crimes my ancestors committed against yours. Neither of us were there. You needn't feel at all ashamed. Though, I would be very happy if you would refrain from calling me a monster from now on. Of course. Monster. It's quite fascinating, everything, but there's a giant glowing crystal begging to be investigated. Oh, yeah. I wonder if it's ether fuel. Hang on, since there are no cutscenes. Look at the way the gears react in this thing. I've never seen this before. If everything the golem said is true, these constructs must have been fueled by fey magic. Forgive my technological ignorance, Claret, but I think you have found what you're looking for. The ether fuel. It's gotta be. It's actually antimatter. The whole setting is destroyed seconds later. <laughs> we break the containment field, and, and that's just it. That's the end of the planet. Tusk is so, so different. Poor Wynn. There's no need to go pointing it out. I just meant she's, you know, she's something else. You don't want to talk. Ah, uh, never mind. Yeah, we get it. Girl! <laughs> I scattered ahead. Just over there to the right, a new path opened for us. It should be a safe way to get out of here. Yes, it's more dynamous. The despair wave approaches. Ah... Uh... Yes, Innocence. Never underestimate the bags of holding. I do have ten. Okay, cool. Just checking. Weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
To what? I'm not yet certain. Might I add this is a horrible idea? You do remember who our enemies are, right? All those not on their side, dummy. It doesn't mean we can trust her. Have you seen those big blue wings? She's Skyborn! And you complain about their attitudes. Alden, before you join us, you should know that we're planning on breaking into a high-level prison and freeing half-breeds the Skyborn have captured. Ugh, now you've done it. Half-breeds? Whatever for? I didn't figure you would have any sympathy. There are few enough half-breeds to make the matter insignificant, free or not. They are evidence of greatly shameful acts, of course, and will never be accepted in Skyborn society. If they're so insignificant, why have the Skyborn been hunting them down so ruthlessly? Ah, that I don't know. That's odd. Well, Alda, if you're going to be joining us, I ask you promise us one thing. Never reveal anything to the Skyborn. Beyond that, it's up to you. You have my solemn oath. It's obvious my race arouses your suspicions, and rightly so. However, consider the advantage you now have with me at your side. More of them will listen to you now than would before. True enough. Now we got the fuel, I'm itching to get back to work. Let's go back to my shop. Okay. I got a side quest to turn in, too. Side quests before conquering the world. God, that was so cute. I believe the exact quote was, I can't conquer the world, I've got a side quest to complete. I mean, honestly, a bag of holding will work very well, except for the fact that certain writers have written what it's like to be inside certain bags of holding, and so it wouldn't work at all. Pretty easy to escape, actually. Hey, we're alive. You owe me 20 gold. We actually survived. Blast! Sorry. Didn't mean to cost you 20 Gs. Just got back from the foray. The monsters are powerful and strange. It's like a different world. Oh yeah, let's try the Coliseum really quick, shall we? Right, we'll save like here so I don't have to do all this again. There we go. This is it. I feel we have gained the power necessary to do what must be done. Those 200 light years, Gumbo. I knew it. You're lying to me. Well, that hurt like hell. Jesus Christ. That's what I'm targeting. I think I'm targeting that thing. Yep, okay. gold for that battle. Wow. Okay. This is above my pay grade. And that guy is literally bonking in my way. We are healed afterwards. Get the frell out of my way. I mean, it depends on if you want to have anything above sectors, really. Like regions, or over sectors, or quadrants. 
If you don't, then yeah, no, that, that tracks. That's just Star Wars at that point. Obviously, a system governor would be in charge of a sector. That's just logical. What a disaster. Problem? My wedding band was stolen. Maybe I dropped it down the well. Either way, my family and the Wadsworth are at war. My father and old man Wadsworth arranged a marriage between me and that spoiled ninny Clayton Wadsworth. Anyway, they think I threw away the wedding band myself, and now they're pricing each other out of business. Oh, well, sorry to hear that, I guess. You look like the crafty type. There's a reward if you get that wedding band. And the shops will open up again. Mm, I do like rewards. Look at the Iron Hill Mines, which is underground. Uh, okay. What was that other jackass? Fantastic, Mr. Red. See, I prefer almond caramel cones that are filled with cheesecake batter. Or cheesecake filling or whatever. Really, Maze? What's it called? Maybe that's why it's on sale right now. Hang on. Yep. So we're still on easy. And that Colosseum battle beat the pants out of me, still. I mean, I, I defeated them, but... Yeah, we're just gonna leave that alone for a bit. Possibly, Maze. Since it's apparently manually scripted, that wouldn't surprise me. So hang on, when did this game come out? Or perhaps a slightly better question would be, how many games have come out between this and Symphony of War? Nephilim uh, Saga. Say what? Laren and I have been arranged to marriage, but I wanted to know if she cared about me at all. So I stole her engagement ring. But if she sent you down here, she must love me at least a little bit. Oh wow, that's much older than I thought. Take it back to her quickly. Okay. Weirdo. Well, I hope you enjoy, Tiny Hippo. Enjoy the Arkham of the past. As it were. I say, there is a highlight reel for the Arkhams, aren't there? I think. I should remember. Which type of corruption, yum yum. Maybe they're secretly Pepto Bismol slimes? Also, how do you make a strategy RPG in RPG Maker? I'm not being facetious, how is that possible? Custom scripts. Okay. That's questions ended. Nothing further, Your Honor. I'd like to move for immediate dismissal.
with prejudice. I'm reminded of something the head-on guy told me when I asked, Why did you make this RPG in Doom? The answer was fascinating, but exactly what I was expecting. It's a user-friendly, easy and free engine. I don't know if I mentioned it then, but something I used to do a lot was make custom map and custom games in Warcraft 3 for the exact same reason. Frankly, StarCraft 2 is just that and even more so. So, Wait, there's actually going to be a Nintendo Direct? I thought it wasn't confirmed. I mean, I know it wasn't confirmed as of this morning. Has it been confirmed today is probably the better way to phrase that. Here you go. Clayton swiped it because apparently he's madly in love with you. Clayton stole it. Oh, I suppose I knew all along. Perhaps I have been a bit cold. Anyway, the shop should open back up soon. Here's a few clings for your trouble. That's a lot of money. Jesus. I will take that. That almost doubled my income in that one purchase, or that one reward. <laughs> Reminds me of CSS, Cyclone. Although, I'm probably just saying that because CSS is one of the only program programming languages I know anything about. I mean, that tracks. That tracks. I'm with it. Sort of. Um, so I know where I am, and I know where I want to be. What I don't know is how those two places connect. I'm in Uptown. I want to be down in the Industrial District. Hmm. There's what I want. Uh, excuse me. I mean, honestly, it's also part of why almost all of my videos, including my animations, are done in Premiere. Because I know Premiere, inside and out, so I know what I'm doing. It's not exactly the most user-friendly thing, and there's arguably much better software for, you know, doing animation, but I know Premiere. I don't really have time to go learn a brand new software, you know. There he is. You've done it! Gimme, 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 gimme. There you go, as promised. Experimental potion. Made it for myself, too. Here goes. What the? Blast it. Something's a bit off yet. Not to worry. This new size will help me gather any ingredient from anywhere without being seen. You should see what the effects the potion has on you. Uh, sure. That's something I'm in a hurry to do. Based on what just happened to you. I mean, honestly, Premiere's kind of a pain in the neck. And gets worse with every iteration. I've actually had to lock it so it stops updating. Because it was literally getting to the point where it was affecting my ability to do my job editing my own videos because of Premiere updates. That's not a joke. Anyways, thoughts on what's going to be at the Nintendo Direct? Uh, I honestly have no idea. Nintendo Direct can be anything. They can be amazing. They can be useless. It can be a bunch of indie games. It can be all sorts of things. So I have no idea. Wait, 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 wait. Colony ships can get better, Gum Gum? I'm betting disappointment. It'll be it'll it'll be disappointment. That's what it will be. Uh, am I done? Right. I knew there was a second reason. I was so focused on the side quest. There is another reason I'm down here, I just don't remember where it is. And 
and I will definitely figure it out before... Um... Oh my god, where am I? Okay, what's up here? Aha! This is what I wanted. Okay. Um, all right, the workshop's on the airship because she's crazy. Well, it's all yours now, Claret. Yep. Need any help? No, just let me do this alone. Next time I see you, the Prometheus engine will be done. All right, then. See you later. I'm sure, it'll be a work of art. I've been going through this in my head a thousand times. Now that we finally have the parts, why is it so hard to get started? Even scraps can be made into something wonderful. Nothing is ever too broken to be given up on. Except for Mega Man X7. Screw that game. Mom, Dad, this is for you. Time to build our final party member. Yeah, but think of all the useful spare parts they'll be to the local necromancer, Pillars of Snow. So hope you're right about this thing, Dad. I'm I wouldn't bet on Metroid Prime 4. The problem with having bigger ships with more colonists, Gum Gum, is you have to have more everything else too. More supplies, more Okay, supplies is such a generic word, but they need more supplies, they need more medical, they need more food, they need more spare parts, they need more tools, they need more raw materials, right? They, they, they need a ton more to accommodate the larger colony, right? Now, I'm not saying you don't have that, I'm just saying that's the first thing my mind jumps to. Yeah, lots of infrastructure. You need to have functional machines that you can plop down on the colony, ready to go. This kind of technology has never been used before. But just as we don't know how to use it, the Skyborne don't know how to defend against it. I think it's down to get a few weapon upgrades, though. Okay, how do we do that? We don't. Okay. Well, since she continues to be my DPSer, let's just keep making her my D Do I have any obsidian? No, okay. Nope. I have a lot of Platina, though. Hang on, let's save before I do this. Since there's no take back seas when it comes to crafting. That is a decent damage upgrade. That's probably worth making the other one. Interesting, Alex. That, I suppose, makes a degree of sense. There we go. Yeah, her damage... She's definitely the damage dealer in this group. That hasn't changed in a while. I mean, it's probably not going to change at all at this point.
So, we did it! Let's get everyone together and plan our next move. Time for the final dungeon. Probably not, actually. The sky is on fire. Help! Hello. Easy there, old timer. We got a ringer on a team now. Well, if you say so. But old Wax will look like a genius when she kills us all. Anyway, you got some info for us, Wax? Yep. It's as we feared. Skyborn have taken our friends to a higher level of town. When our contacts saw him being herded through a portal in Uptown. We're unable to track him any further. No humans allowed there. Correction. Very few humans allowed through there. I may have mentioned at some point my family owns a majority stake in Blackstone Industries. Such a large company, there's an entire division that deals directly with the Skyborn government. My father regularly travels up to the Celestial District for... Celestial District? That's subtle. For company dealings and such. I happen to know the factory is in possession of a special permit that allows Blackstone product to be delivered upstairs. With that permit, we get access, and we're right in the belly of the beast. With the Prometheus engine, there's no way the guards will let us take that through. Right you are. But once we've made it, it should be easy matter to secure a place at the airship dock. Wax can bring the ship up, and we'll have everything we need. Can you bring yourself to fight your own kind during the inevitable melee, Alda? If it must be done, I mean, I did murder my own friend. I don't think she did. I will believe. I believe the coming events will be significant for us all. Sounds just reckless enough to work. Where's this warehouse of yours? Head into the Blackstone's office in the Industrial District. Blackstone security bots are a fierce. Oh, this is gonna be the second to last dungeon. Okay. Let me impart some wisdom. I figure you laddies and lassies get to use it more than me. Uh, what? Uh, huh? Are we seriously getting another class up? Why doesn't that work that way in real life? Tell me a story, Grandpa. Ahem. <clears throat> as a sniper, this force is focused into a single target. As a Technomancer, I can use an electromagnetic pulse that devastates mechanized beings. Sniper. But I'm going to say please explain. I learn Eliminate, an extremely powerful tech attack against one enemy. As a Techo, I learn EMP. It's an all-hitting tech attack that devastates robotic enemies and prevents them from using specials. Sniper. Our enemies grow fierce As a general, I'll be an invincible wall, dashing the enemy's hopes into oblivion. As a gladiator, I can send the enemies into oblivion. Please explain. As a general, I'll defend any ally from single target attacks if they're under 50% health. Nice. Also, I learned inspiration. Speeds up all allies and draws more threat to myself. As a gladiator, I get attack power and coup de grace. A finishing move that'll attack the enemy three times. General. My powers have matured. I have a natural affinity for magic that manipulates the vital energies of everything around us. As a savant, I can refine my restorative magic to its peak, and as an inquisitor, I can master my own vitality and the vitality of mine enemies. As a savant, I get more mana, renew, and cripple. Renew will revive, heal, and cleanse all allies. So that's the healer limit break three. Cripple will hit the enemy party with a powerful force, damaging and debilitating. As an Inquisitor, my physical vitality increases further. I learn Siphon Life and Paragon. Siphon Life instantly absorbs HP from the enemy party, even more if they are currently affected with Blood Tap. Paragon, I cast on myself. It grants me every positive buff in the books. I also learn Circle of Healing, which heals all party members. Well then. I am going to go with Savant, but I'm really tempted by Inquisitor. Just yikes. Look at me go. As a pugilist, I can slice and dice everything in my way with pure Earth and Fey Fury. Or I can be even more tricky and sneaky as an interloper. As a pugilist, my attack power increases further. I learn Cyclone, a powerful all-hitting physical attack that inflicts bleed. As an interloper, my evasion increases and I learn Humiliator. It's a single target effect that afflicts poison, blind, silence, and stun. Please be an interloper. Very little is matched for a Skyborn warrior at her zenith. I can specialize in devastating magic weapon skill as a blade mistress, or effortlessly deflect enemy attacks as a vanguard. My attack bar increases. I learn preparation and light fury crusher. Preparation uses a turn, but neck will guarantee enormous damage next turn. Light fury crusher is the most powerful single physical target in existence. Takes a long time to charge, but does immense damage. As a vanguard, my def goes up. I learn magic shield and majesty. Magic shield is duh. Majesty, sh magic, sh majesty is a special move that intimidates the enemy party 
decreasing their stats by 50%. We're gonna go with Blade Mistress. Via Deeps. Thank you. In case I regret that. Yes, she is going to be doing all of the damage. All right, now I need to find this place, which I think is over here. Because I've never been able to go in here. I'm wrong. Blind and done when stupid. Where the hell? Ah, I just want to go left. Thanks. Blackstone bodyguards make ten times what I make. Lousy local pay. Yeah, pay your militia well. Jesus. Yeah, this is Blackstone. Hi. Mr. Chesterford, pleasure to see you again. Most of the local staff is on business, so it's nice to see a friendly face. Small conundrum arises. If I were to suddenly demand to be given a permit, it would certainly draw the attention of my father, putting a quick end to our plans. Best if we could get our hands on it without drawing notice. Perhaps if there was some surrounding chaos. You want a distraction? Precisely! Okay. Shouldn't be too hard for me to mess up your security bots. You realize your system's a few years out of date? Here we go. Welcome to the Blackstone Industry Security Net. Please choose your thing. Cause a distraction. Mr. Chesterford, thank goodness, it's madness in there. Security system's gone haywire. Never fear, I shall subdue our seditious security straight away. You realize we're going to have to fight our way through this now. And what heroes we shall be. Wait, we're the heroes of this story? Yeah, I'm kidding, Anosians. Interesting song. depend, Gum Gum. I mean, both kinds of corruption do need to be combated, one way or the other. Yeah, the music, I've already given the music a positive and I stand by that. The Empire would only stand for sweets if they knew what they were. Only a fool would accept something without knowing what it is first. What's the difference between BC and CC, Gum Gum? Getting these damn spades cars. I wonder how many of them I've gotten, or missed for that matter. We're missing the king, seven, five, two, and one. Oh, gotcha, Alex. Oh, whatever. Not super into that. I mean, unless those super bosses use actual custom scripts, that just sounds like a stat block. Hi, Mono Brent. I mean, in those hands. You know it. 
I imagine all of them are, Cyclob. Like, there doesn't seem to be a lot of available backtracking for some areas. And as we go through, certain areas change, so... I could be wrong, though. Might have to fight that one. Nope. We good. Uh, that's actually an interesting question. But apparently New Game Plus is available, so there you go. Alright. Time to show these fools who's boss. By 15? Jesus, Alex. We could actually put just a full suit of actual armor on Claret if we did that. Eliminate. Not actually doing that. We'll do it on the next boss. Because the next boss, I'm going to do the full combo. Get the debuff from Chaska. And then get the buff from herself. And then get the time up from herself. And then do the wind up attack from herself. We'll see how much damage we do. I wonder what the damage cap is in this game. No reason, I'm just curious. Is this entire factory automated except for two people? I mean, I know they mentioned that the pe personnel were out and about, but, like, really? Hmm. I mean, honestly, as long as Arya dies, I'm okay with it, Zach Tab, so. Whatever gets us to that point. No! Damn it! You know, I'd ask why the super bosses give gear, but I know the answer to that question. money. Yeah, I've never cared for that decision, Cyclone, in any RPG. Unless there's a new game plus, that kind of mitigates that a bit. But yeah, that's an old, old design choice. Just one I've never agreed with. Wow, look at this equipment, state of the art, I've never seen anything like it. This could have all been yours if you'd accepted my marriage proposal. Maybe you should have mentioned it then. I don't even know about it. Some I doubt you would have been swayed anyhow. Nah, you were a knob in back then. I wouldn't have accepted you for the world. I was? Well, now you're... Hey, look! High-tech stuff! We all saw that one coming. It sounds like you're designing a situation built for a civil war. Go, go.
Yeah, she was always the bad one. Subject detected outside of processing platform. Commencing emergency sealing procedure. What's happening to me? Alda? Feel it too, this thing can completely nullify magic. That's an interesting way to vary up a boss fight. Oh, that's extraordinarily common, Gum Gum. In fact, it's so common when I mentioned that wasn't a thing in my setting, people asked me why not. Try some. I saved right before this, anyways. So, anyways. <laughs> Excuse me. I think we got him. I have been getting all the explore points. Well done. That was quite agonizing. For once we agree, Skyborn. Hang on, that was a hell of a battle. I need to go recover after that. Ah! I kind of lean the same way, Cycloud. Obviously, the other possibility is make it something cosmetic. And I would probably do the cosmetic thing as an unlock. So even if I didn't have New Game Plus, it would be unlocked on, you know, the game, right? So from then on, you have access to the cosmetic even if you start a new game. Something like that. I don't know. Captain. Capital? This permit will get us to the top of the city. Capital! Wait a second. What are these machines anyway? This pod's not big enough to fit a body. Creepy. Let's take our lead before we get nightmares. Sullivan! What the devil are you doing here? Father? Uh, my friends heard about the alarm, so we simply could not miss the excitement. Uh, I say, Sullivan. If you spent half the time applying yourself to business as you do waving that sword of yours around, You'd be a man of your own means by now. I suppose greetings are in order, then. Welcome, friends, to the inner sanctum of Blackstone Industries. I do not expect to be graced by the presence of a stunning skyboard lady. Oomph. Son, come with me. I need to speak with you in my office. Son, I am pure evil. Is there a problem, father? Not for anybody that is connected to me. As long as you're with me, me being pure evil is fine. But if you're not with me, well... This Skyborn lady friend of yours, yeah, what about her? You're always going on about how you wish your family had spent more time with the civilized folks. Mayhap. That doesn't mean I want them in my lab, however. What is this place? I trust you're not so oblivious as to be ignorant of the small problem the Skyborn have been trying to contain. I'm speaking, of course, of the human Skyborn half-breeds. Skyborn had previously been able to gather the half-breeds in any sort of number. Their potential magic made the endeavor too risky. However, with the technology we built here, the half-breeds are able to undergo a processing treatment, which temporarily seals their powers. Are you telling me our family's been involved in the incarceration of half-breeds? Oh, goodness, it's nothing to get so pucked up over. Nothing? How can you say that? You, of all people! What about Jilly? You... you knew of her? Your own daughter? Of course I knew! I knew about her for years. One night I heard you talking. You said you needed to take care of your little indiscretion. You've known. You are the worst kind of hypocrite. You should betray your own... You would betray your own flesh and blood. And worse, you helped the Skyborn subjugate others. 
As if it weren't bad enough, you have to grovel for them and practically beg to lick their boots. Sullivan! It's the truth! I fear we may have just misjudged one another, my boy. I had no idea you such, such, had such strong feelings on the matter. If I had, I would have told you straight away. I built the lab for one purpose only, saving Jilly's life. Like I said, this facility seals a half-breed's magic. Jilly could pass the Skyborn's inspection and stay with us. We have no use for non-magical half-breeds, you know. You didn't want to have her killed? Of course not! My daughter... In the end, I lost her anyhow. I can only hope she found a way to survive. So you said the Skyborn still used the facility. Yes, unfortunately, they discovered my project. I convinced them it was no more than a new business venture for the betterment of their new Stormbrook. Luckily for me, they found it entirely natural for me to do them such a service. All this time, I thought you sided with the Skyborn. Unnecessary ruse, Sullivan. I have still one child to protect. Father, there's something I need to do. After that, I think we'll have much to talk about. Is everything okay? You look a little shaken up. Don't worry about me. We got the paperwork. Let's go to Uptown. Oh, thank God we have to go back to the dungeon. I mean, he's he's only a little evil, you know? That's slightly more difficult than I thought it would be. Right you are, my good Claret. Onward to Uptown. The portal will be opened up to us. It's in the dead center of the Praetor's Hall. Which I definitely know where that is. I mean, when you've got layers of evil, you know, it's uh, you gotta kind of choose and pick and... Well, you know how it is. It's okay, it only temporarily seals their magic. We've only have the eyewitness account of two people whose magic was sealed away that it's extraordinarily uncomfortable. Possibly even painful over long periods of time. Don't worry about it. Oh my god, I don't remember where this stupid place is. It's not there, it's not there. Here it is. I think. Yep. Let me in. Turn around and stare where you belong. We're with Blackstone Industries. Paperwork? This goes even higher than me. Very well, proceed. Thank you. Pissant. I see nothing's changed in my absence. Is this where you're trained to become a warrior? Yes, all Skyborn do. I have strong memories of this place. The Fifth Legion is the elite force that spearheaded the war, the Empress's personal body guard. If I remember correctly, the portal to New Stormrook is just inside the fortress. That's a lot of soldiers. The soldiery has a little hierarchy going. We call the fresh recruits brownies, as indicated by their brown armor. Prefecture is in silver, and officers are in gold. Legionnaires are the elite of the elite, so green. And there's that seal music again. Yeah, no kidding, Alex. Come with us! Um, who's that? Nobody. And who's that? Isn't that a half-breed? Shut up. Let's go. This is, this is very important official business. Very official, very dangerous. We're, we're all fine. Everything's fine. Please. Roll a 20. Wow! I believe you. Rebel filth. It, Lieutenant Shin told me you some survived. Yeah, how did she survive? Filth, is it? 
Didn't want to talk, you lying, scheming, murderous. Huh? Yeah, I figured that was Ryler. What's ironic is what gave it away was the eyebrows. Wait, what? Alda, this is a surprise. You two know each other? I thought you were dead. You did your best, didn't you? The Empress herself healed me, otherwise you would have finished the job. That's right, there's two healers. Why didn't they tell me? Why didn't you tell me? Rather, I was just... Just following orders. I know. You taught me what the Academy never could. People are nothing more than a means to an end. Stepping stones to greater goals. That's not what I... It, no? In one stroke you attained every honor while I was stripped of mind. I understand that some small part of me... I understand that. Some small part of me even admired you for it. But you were colder than I knew. The cost of your glory meant so little to you that you could walk away from it all. I left for a reason! Doesn't matter. With the eradication of the treasonous rebels, I will ascend to greater heights than you ever did! Screw your goals. After what you did to me and those helpless people, I'm gonna blast your wings off. No, you mustn't hurt him. Aldo, what are you doing? Get out of the way! Great! Great! That's exactly what I wanted to happen in my life right now. That's wondrous. Eliminate him. Wow, he lived through that. Holy crap. You've grown strong for being of lower stock. I did not expect a healer in your midst, and a half-breed of that. Alda, this is not over. I guess that did one-shot him. Tell me, Alda, is turning on your comrades a habit of yours? I only wanted... We should have known better. Skyborn can't be trusted. Sullivan, she wasn't trying to hurt us. She cast Immolate on us! At least I hope not. Oh, but seeing him alive, I felt too much. I couldn't raise my blade against him. He might have at least told me Ryler was Dacian. He was nice and tragic in your story, but I could have told you the things he's done, all the horrible things he's done in mine. Which is what that line should be, but it isn't, because this is not very well written. Ryler Dacian, if he has done evil, it was I who set him on that path. I must find him. There's so much more I need to say. You know, I'd, I'd rather we don't find that fellow again. We have a mission to carry out. Right, let's get moving before he comes back with reinforcements. I mean, she did already kill him once, so it's, it's kind of whatever at this point. Mm hmm. Hello? Blackstone paper. Your face is unfamiliar, but the official seal is a centurion. I must abide. Okay. How dare she try to be a character. Listen, Alda. You, when you commit to the torturous, deadly, horrific rebellion, you've got to commit to it 100%. Now remember, we just need to breeze through here and act normal so no one suspects. Would you look at this place? Oh, good gods, when Chaska sees this, she's gonna do that. This is the most beautiful, gorgeous, amazing, shiniest, shiny thing. My eyes, my eye! I absolutely cannot withstand such beauty. I think I shall faint dead away. Yeah, I thought so. Make sure you faint away from the edge, Chaska. They built this place for winged folk. <sighs> Evil. The airship dock, focus please. South side of town, post haste. Worst rebellion in fiction? Star Wars. At least in the AU. My husband seems to think New Stormrook is the future. You see, if you haven't noticed, there's a bit of a divide amongst the Skyborn. Half of us are of the idea that our ancestral homeland, in Old Stormbrook, is a relic of the past, while the other half is upset that the Skyborn Dominion seems to be making this place its new center of power. 
I don't expect dirt stompers to grasp the inside politics of our society. Carry on your business. Oh, God, I'm sorry. Every single gun I have just is in you now. Okay, hang on. It's okay. Don't move. Don't move. They will go off at a moment's notice if I just pull these guns out of your gut. Oh, oh, there, there goes your upper body. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm sure your wings will carry you to something. Uh... <laughs> to the medical help you need? I don't know. You're dead. Bam. You're dead. Bam. I'm just going to kill everyone up here. Assassin's Creed style. Would you look at that? I haven't seen a human here in months. Years even. I just killed this guy. You didn't hear it from me, but some of us wish to see your kind eventually share full privileges and rights we Skyborn have now. Probably won't happen with the Empress and the Centurion so bent on conquest. Possibly even, what do they call it, demographic cleansing? Ah, oh, that's a fun topic. Well, he's dead. She's dead. Everyone's dead. I suppose you ground-bound people aren't as frightening as the tales say. And she's dead! Look over there, the girl with the purple hair. She's a soprano at the Odium. Voice more haunting than a siren's song. My word. Keep your distance from me, you peasants! I have nothing on my person for you to abscond. But you do! I abscond with your life, madame. What are you doing? Blackstone transactions under the inner office of the palace. Get out of here before I drop you wingless worms over a ledge. Greetings! I was just discussing the impending doom of your race, as the Stormrook Dominion looks to extend its reach to the west. Viridia, Dunenberg, Ostagard, all lie ripe for the picking and utterly defenseless. Ever heard of the places? Not to worry. By the time you would ever visit them, they would be annexed and renamed anyway. <laughs> Come to enjoy our little piece of paradise? We've been throwing around the idea of a little playpen for our more obedient humans. Hang on. I'm going to pull a Kratos... Shove my foot into her back, grab the wings, and pull. You know... People keep saying that, Ross, and they keep being proven wrong. It's, it's No, we're not doing a Viking Wings thing. No. That's too much. Jump. No, um... Just what's going on here. Stand down, officer. I've got these worms under control. Very well, as you were, madame. My patience for your kind wears thin. Cleaning crew, airship about to arrive, and I'm gonna go clean it. Fitting work for a dirt stomper. Proceed. What in all the skies is that thing? I got sick from working around airships too long. Just stay a good distance from me. Interesting way to do that. I'll tell you, Kagi. Let the airship know we're good. It's okay. I'm not sh stabbing them in the face. Although, I guess bullets are kind of a form of stabbing, aren't they, if you really think about it? Alright, so far so good. On to the next step. We're going to narrow down the location of the half-breeds. Alda, time to put those wings to good use. You're going to take Corwin to the Skyborn authorities. Very well. What? No! It's alright, I can face whatever they put me through if it'll help the others. I can help heal, too, once I'm there. 
Alright, I'll send Kagi with you. I've rewired him to act as a tracking device. When inside the Prometheus engine, I'll know exactly where he is. Once you've found them, Alda, Claret will come to you. She'll be in the machine. Things will turn chaotic after that, but with that armor, we'll bring our friends back here and get out. What about me? I want to help Corwin too. Oh, you're small enough. Why don't you ride the Prometheus engine with me? Yay! This is it. There is no turning back. Final dungeon time. It's so much the final dungeon. Bregwin's power is going up. That's just how much he knows the final dungeon. This is the final leg of your journey. If you proceed, you cannot turn back. Yeah, whatever. Let's go! I know, right, Loke? Jesus, Braglin. It's not quite that bad here, but it's getting there, and of course, humidity. We did start this game today, yes, yeah, Star Wars. Ironically, most of the games in the Misk block are actually kind of short. Not that I'm complaining. Make that cute shrink! Um... I was going to, actually, Alex. Because, yeah, we split the party, so to speak. But thank you for the kind words. Of infinite death. Oh, there's longer games. Uh, Hades is supposed to be decently long. It's also kind of variably long, because it's, you know, procedural. Uh, I forget what else. What else is going to... Someone type exclamation mark next for me, would you please? Caught this one trying to blend in with the humans. Some of these half-breeds can be slippery. True enough, sister. Cripes, this one hasn't been processed. Blackstone Labs. I can't be bothered to go all the way down there. Just bring them back again. Eh, it's probably for the best. We're about to send off the next batch anyway. Come on, allow me to escort you to the holding area. Yeah, I know we're at the depression block next, but I was curious after that. Let's see here. So we've got the Depression Block, Space Marine, Beyond Good and Evil, Halo Wars 2, Mortal Kombat. Hollow Knight might be decently long. Outer Wilds, I'm not sure how long it'll be. And 80s will be decently long. After that, we hit the RPG block where every game will be long. Hmm. This should do it. I need to head back to my post. Stay vigilant, sister. Thank you. Hold through for me, Claret. So this will go on no longer, my friend. I swear it. It's comforting to hear you say that. Maybe one day it'll be right. What if Claret's a little mechanized homunculus? Minkagi? I sent the signal the moment we got here. Claret should be here any moment. What are you people going to do to us? That's a good question. I have nothing to say to you. Scum. Well... I'll just get some exercise in really quick. Yep, Tales of Arise is going to be a long one. It doesn't even have a duration because that was added to the game so long ago. Or so added to the list, excuse me, so long ago. That we didn't know anything about it other than the fact that it existed. So. Spectacular, well, Spider-Man. You got it. And thank you, Sean, as ever, for being a part of my show. Okay, so that didn't work. Okay. I mean, it's a Tales of game, so it'll probably be as long as a Tales of game. Maybe don't stand in front of the... Wow, I am unstoppable! 
your head's exposed. Um, maybe you stand back from the... Quick, everybody, get out of here. Follow me. What's this? How did human rebels get this far? Destroy that abomination. Ha! Did a gnat just land on me? Stop screwing around and kill them. That's not all. It's not just absorbing your spells. Corwin, are you okay? I'm fine. Where's Sullivan? He's somewhere in the palace. Let's get him and go. Some of the half-breeds have taken have been taken elsewhere by high-level Skyborn. Keep an eye out for him. So this should probably be the final dungeon. If and I were to guess. There's another one after this. That sucks. Alright. You know what I really hate is when a game is just slightly too long to comfortably finish in one day. Because that's never good for the schedule. There's nothing I can do about that. Unless I don't have to do a rumination of this one. Hint, hint, hint. That, that's honestly your call completely, Alex. You funded this by yourself. So it's your decision. This is, in fact, an RPG Maker game, yes. Wow, that AI, look at that. I mean, I kind of have to do it tonight. That's how that works. But that's okay, I'll make it work. It's okay, I'm pretty sure the rumination on this is going to be like 10 minutes long. There's not much to talk about. So let's talk about RPG Maker. Let's talk about simplistic RPG design. Let's talk about some story concepts that I find interesting. Threat system's kind of cool. Um, I do like the combo system. Uh, I think that's actually it. <laughs> so there you go. There's your preview of the rumination as of right now. Now we'll see if I have anything else to add to that. I mean, I'm pretty sure some of the really old Tales of Games, like the original Tales of Games, probably suck. But other than that, yeah. Yep, that's a thing. Yeah, you notice our HP, by the way? I hope you notice our HP. Yeah, this might be a bit of a hyperbeam moment. Yeah, I noticed the threat, by the way. That was 12,000 damage, if you caught that. Yeah, this might be a little bit of a victory lap. Which means the actual last dungeon will be a little bit more challenging, so that's fun. Oh, hey. I already 
already have one of those. Cool. Thanks, game. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, Zisteria and Berseria are fine. I always forget which one's which. But I do think that both are hindered by their connection to each other. And I mean that. I mean, it's, it's the Chrono Trigger Chrono Cross thing, right? Both of them are literally made worse by the fact that they decided to connect them. Wow, that takes a lot of mana. I'm actually looking forward to Arise, though. I like Tales of games. They're kind of... formulaic. But I don't mind that. It's like Dragon Quest games. You know, Dragon Quest games don't branch out all that much. They're just Dragon Quest games, and they're good. Same concept. You know how the Final Fantasy series is constantly trying to reinvent itself? Tales of games haven't really changed, probably since Sym Symphonia. At least not in core structure. Yeez is its own thing. And I'll admit I don't have as much experience with Yeez. By the way, hi, Sonic Doctor. Ether Cannon! Yeah, honestly, just, just murder them. Just murder them. In their stupid faces. Yeah, exactly. You may fire when ready. So it should be another boss, and then the final dungeon. Ready, let's do it! I suppose we have to officially start judging the outro. I suppose we should also cut... So, those of you who haven't got your guesses in now, this is probably a really good time to get in your guess for the... Uh, for the... What, what you think the golden number is going to be. With this sacrifice, I sustained the world for a moment longer. Ah, what happened to me? Say, so, yep, they're sacrificing half-breeds. For some reason. What did you do to her? Ah, Clarence Spencer, you nosy little worm. Legionnaires, don't let the spell be disrupted. Really? Okay. Do I have like an AoE one? No, I don't. I mean, I got this. Have fun! All that AoE damage. So listen, uh, there's this thing called death. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of this. But you're going to become intimately familiar with it very soon. Alright, who's next? I'll make short work of this contraption. Shin, don't bother with offensive magic. They've got defense against it. Uh... The Empress. You. Ha! And so ends a tyrant. The dimensional rift is destabilizing. Shin, I can't leave the rift alone. It's up to you. Destroy them! Oh no, we have to defeat someone we've literally already beaten before. However shall I manage this terrible and difficult task? Alright. 
All right, so anyways. No. Give it up, Skyborn. You're lost. Stupid dirt stopper. You have no idea what you've done. Ryla, what is that spell? Dimensional Rift. If I can't get it under control, all of New Stormrook will be consumed. Oh, no! Anyway. All of New Stormrook? Sullivan, no. Why ever not? In one stroke, we could be rid of all of them and free, the, and free of their tyranny. Fool. We Skyborn were bred from the gods themselves. It is our destiny to rule your kind. Until such time as we can finally cleanse the world of your stink, your grit. Even if you are foolish enough to interrupt me, many of your people will be dragged to the abyss along with us. A worthy sacrifice. Say goodnight, Dacian. It's not worth it, Sullivan. There are innocents in Skyborn too. Excuse me, there are innocents in Skyborn too. There are people just like us. We're all just people. It's just some of us are extremely stupid and deserve to die. What happened? Where are we? Ryla was saying something about a dimensional rift. Maybe we got pulled in. So, someone mentioned FF5 earlier. Maybe we're all dead. Claire, what were you thinking? Me? You're the one who thought it'd be a great idea attacking out the crazy spell, you bumbling fop. Perhaps I did get carried away. Quest journal updated. I fear for the city's people and for Ryla. Why is he not with us? This place isn't beautiful at all. It's full of darkness and pain and sorrow. Uh, it looks kind of pretty to me, but I like crystal, so whatever. I acted rashly. You were right to try and stop me. This is the price I must pay, so be it, but none of you should suffer for my actions. Could this be where the Skyborn were sending the half-breeds? Maybe they're still here somewhere. Last dungeon. For realsies. Right? Right? <laughs> Because this so feels like a last dungeon. We can't mope around here forever. Let's look for a way out. I mean, it's a giant crystal thing in a dimensional rift. It sure as hell looks like a last dungeon. Ah, oh, that didn't aggro me at all. There's no way out. There's no way out. There's no way out. There's no way out. Nice place. So, yes. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, what did you just give me? Oh, who cares? Ominous Skull. This item could be used to augment weapons in Awkward. Yeah, sure, whatever. Let's augment this by adding even more damage. Endless damage. Jesus. Okay, so that, if we put it on a weapon, this is straight up Diablo 2, it, it gives you 100% attack absorb, but you lose HP. That reduces the equipment weight of something by 8. That increases crit chance by 15%. That doubles the weapon power. i use that one. Look at that. Look at that. Jesus. Increased tech damage. Yeah, let's do that. She has an up-to-date weapon. But she has an even more up-to-date weapon. Give her the diamond. I haven't really touched the armor, like, at all this whole time. I just was like, yep, weight limit, got it. That's a good point. I meant to put that on earlier. I forgot to do it. 
here. She's now immune to debuffs. What can we do to that? Aw, oh, accessories cannot be augmented. And yeah, it's a ribbon. We're gonna stack crit on Alda, I think. Actually, let's make you immune to status effects, Mr. Healer. Yes, it was FF10. You had, you don't unlock the weapon customization for way too long because it's a really cool mechanism and feature in FF10, but you don't get it till forever, which really sucks. Yeah, you have to get way into the game. Well over the halfway point. Oh, it is, Alex. Like, I remember I had a strategy guide at the time. It's like, oh, I, that sounds cool. I want that. What's that require? Oh. Oh. Got it. I can feel it draining me. I'm so weak already. I wish it would just end. Spelling error. I wish all spelling errors would end, too. This giant mound of gold. I'm sorry, what's a KJ? Gum gum. Yeah, but kill a jewel isn't a distance. Thank. I could be wrong about that. How far is a kill a jewel? That doesn't sound right. Ah! Uh, okay. They're behemoths. Yeah, kill a jewel is a manager of electricity. That's right. So I'm afraid I'm going to have to answer your question with, I have no idea what you're talking about, Gum Gum. A gun that shoots bullets from 5.4 kilojoules. Question mark? I mean, I suppose that refers to the, to the impact source although I have no idea how you'd even calculate that. I would be ignorant of such a thing.
Well, anyway, since I have absolutely no metric or measurement for any of that, I have absolutely no idea what that means. So, uh, that's my answer to you. Boo. You know how in, like, Neverwinter Nights or Baldur's Gate, if you have an int of five, you know, you're all like, Ugh. that's me right now, I have an int of five. I mean, I guess that's just me normally, but you're not quite. Well, if I needed a level, these give plenty of X. I do not need a level, but, you know, good to have options. Actually, I have, Andrew. In fact, during the speedrun of Fallout 1, which I only tinkered with briefly, it's very advantageous at certain points to dumb yourself down with drugs, and then dumb yourself right back up with drugs. Drugs solve a lot of problems in Fallout 1. It's really kind of funny. I'm not making that up. Hey, it's... Nothing to eat around here. Well, except you. You look like nice folks, so I'll let you pass. Unless you think you can be... No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, now to kill you. Whoever you are. <laughs> Lol, Valerian. I don't even know about that one. What? That did 23,000 damage, and I don't think her health moved. Yep, nope. Her health is down by maybe 5%. Wow. She said she was just kidding about the eating you thing. Go save the world, kids. Yeah, that's apparently just the gaunter of this setting. Just hanging out. Hey, what's up? If that's a super boss, I ain't even touching that nonsense. But no, that felt like a supposed to... Honestly, that felt like a, uh, a reference boss. Like, fighting Dante kind of a thing. It's like, hey, what's up? And then he curb stomps you. And then you're like, hey, okay. Yeah, can we hire her? So... Ah, there you are. Ryler, you survived. There is no survival in this place. Where are we? The Celestial Nexus. All Skyborne magic originates here. And this is where we send the sacrifices. The half-breeds. You only took the ones with magic. They're of no use to anyone otherwise. They cannot even breed. Better one of them than a true Skyborn. That's horrible. Perhaps, which is why the details are kept secret. Of course, none of that matters now. The real world is lost to us. Are we truly stuck here? Yes. Until this place takes us all. However... At least my blade will taste your blood before the end! Dude, do you not remember? 
the last couple of times we fought. Is, is this... Do you... Oh, oh, you know what? I'm sorry. I probably beat his head so hard that he forgot. I mean, possibly, Alex. Whoops. Half his health. Ow. What is this? A gun and more gun scenario? Anyways, he's dead. I'm glad my end will be swift. Rather, wait. Corwin can heal you. Alda. At least I fought back this time, right? Ryler, you incredibly evil jackass who is okay with genocide! the hell are you? Wait, is this a space flea from nowhere? Earthen Fay at last. Is it talking to me? Do not fear me, youngling. We are kindred. Are you saying you're a Fae too? I thought they were all killed by the Skyborn. All others. I was spared. I was imprisoned. But why? I was the last and the greatest. My kind were the Fae, anchors of magic throughout this land. In destroying us, our winged creations nearly destroyed themselves. The very last when they realized their mistake, they stayed their blades and sealed me within the Fae realm. For years, I have been held prisoner here, subsisting on the pitiful souls they send me, too weak to break free. You're the one draining the half-breeds? I cannot do otherwise. Here, cut off from the earth, my spirit absorbs their blood, whether I will it or not. That's why I'm glad you've come. Is there some way we can set you free? Yes. F help me find my freedom in death. You want us to kill you? No, we can't. I am far past the point of redemption. I am now simply a magical abomination bent to serve the Skyborn. No longer in control of my actions. It is inevitable I will try to destroy you. Please, I beg you all. I don't want to do this. Little one, you are strong. With the power I give you, you'll be stronger still. Even so, to break the... Enough so, even, to break the seal on this realm. You mean get us back home? I shall wait no longer. Fight me until the end! Final boss is Bob. For some reason. I gotta be real, I'm not feeling this. Got some health. I 
I mean, they did name uh, drop Quelon in the backstory. But, I mean... At last. Erdenfei, you have freed me. With what essence I have left, I will become part of you. Did we kill him? I think we killed him. I mean, she hit him for 32,000. Ah! Chaska, are you alright? I think so. Anyways, time! Uh, was that thing telling the truth? Can you get us out of here? Can you get all of us out of here? So we can go murder all the Skyborn? Yeah, I'm kind of with an Oceans. The story was actually kind of gripping me. And I liked the relatively smaller stakes of it. One city. An occupied city. That's it, right? No need to go beyond that. Fighting back against this occupation and all the problems that that causes and yada yada yada. And having a final boss fight either with the Empress or the Centurion would have been a good way to, to conclude that. Not going to the other dimension to fight one of the last remaining Earthen Fae, who is the source of magic. <laughs> and I know what you're going to say. Other FF games do this too. Yeah, and I give them negatives when they do. There are no sacred cows. Is this a dream? Alda, you must spread the word amongst your people. No more Skyborn or Halfbrains need to be sent to the Fey Realms. Also, we killed your Empress and Centurion, so good luck uh, wrapping that one up. Is Ryler... Yeah, Ryler's Turbo dead. I can't send some anymore, I'm sorry. Sullivan, do try to be less destructive in the future, would you? Whatever do you mean. Claret, can't thank you enough for your kindness and good heart. Without you, I may have never had the opportunity to leave the month. She does not have a good heart. I don't understand. Are you saying goodbye? Corwin. Sniffle. What is it? What's happening, Chaska? I'm gonna miss you is all. But why? Where are you going? I have to have a pointless, tragic ending for no good reason. The seal has been broken, but I have to take Quelan's place as the anchor of magic. Why? If I don't, it will fade from the line entirely. Good! Who, yeah, I'm with Corwin. Who cares? You don't have to be stuck in there. I care. All then, all the Skyborn are fortune magic themselves. Who knows what will happen without them? Okay. Of course, the half-breeds as well. As it is, I can sense the Earth's magic is already less potent with the loss of Quillon. In time, perhaps other Fae will be born. What exactly? And the bonds of earth and magic will strengthen once more. But until then, I must remain. But you hated that place. Yes, but it was warped and tainted. I shall cleanse it. It isn't fair. You shouldn't have to be chained. It's Quillan over again. I don't mind it nearly as much. Okay, okay. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me explain to you why this is objectively stupid. Quillan's stuck in there. And his essence requires feeding on the souls of others willingly or otherwise. He has no control over that. Right? So we seal her in there, and what do you freaking think is going to happen? I'm going to stop reading this out loud because this is stupid. Negative to story. And also gameplay. It really is Pillars of Snow. This is bullet point syndrome, and I was kind of into this story up to this point. Well, okay, up until a certain point before now. You three go ahead. My place is here. My people need to hear of these events. They need someone to lead them. Someone knowledgeable and fair-minded and strong and powerful. 
who can learn from the mistakes of the past. Why are you both looking at me sideways? Nothing. Let's go. Did you hear? The Red Spectre slayed the Empress. Even worse, I haven't been able to cast more than a light spell. Oh, this is automatic. What will become of us? Hey there, Skyborn plan to leave ahead for old Stormrook. I think I'm going to go for with them. Ah, the winds of change are blowing. This, why is this being phrased in a positive light? This is so terrible on every level. I don't mean out of character. I mean in character. This is going to screw over everybody. Perhaps we can find a way to coexist with Skyborn as equals. Do you really mean that? Yes, I really do. I've come to think that in the past I have been ever so slightly narrow-minded. But we, that's not how that works, Pillars of Snow. You, I, mm. I can't believe it. No more hiding, no more underground. This is going to be great. It'll take some time before everything settles down, but yeah, I think we're finally on the path to peace. Yes, because the assassination of a head of state of an offensive, militarily focused, occupying power always leads to good things. If you want to contribute, how about you fund my new business venture? What would that be? Claret's Mobile Air Repair. Anytime, any altitude, my workshop comes to you. You're taking my airship into your air shop? Yeah, I mentioned it before. It's going to be a huge success. And as soon as I have the money, which I will soon, I'll buy Spencer Drydock back from you. Alright, I forgot I bought that place. You're hiring. I know a bunch of out-of-work rebels that could use employment. Goodness, this is starting to sound like work. It is, but it's work fixing stuff and helping people. Who knows? You might even be good at it. What do you say? Very perceptive little guy is. He's wondering about the Red Spectre. I have a feeling the Red Spectre will be meeting his untimely end soon. I've done a lot of things that could only inflame passions while trying to build lasting peace. Fear not, I will pay the penance. I owe this city so much. Yeah, exactly, an Oceans. One of the things I gave this game credit for, and it's one of these story positives up here, was for the fact that it did a good job of showing just how messed up this society was. A society this messed up is not just like, oh, okay. Like we're about to see happen in a few seconds. We cannot fall prey to the mistakes of the past. Our people's best days are ahead of us. I nominate Alda to be our new empress. Hang on, I need to get my glasses off for no good reason. What? Yeah, by the way, that's the simp, if you forgot about him. That's Filbert. This is this is a parody of an ending. That's not what I... Yet, yeah, congratulations, you killed the queen. All hail the queen. We must unite into the second Skyborn Empire! Oh my god. And the crowd's all for it. Including the elite guards right there, who just heard her admit to the assassination of the Empress minutes ago. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Isn't that silly, Sword? Yeah, he gave it to me last I saw him. Said I didn't need it anymore. We can spar later if you want. That'd be great. I'm trying to get good enough to make it through Nordenwald Forest. The forest? Why? Uh, you know. Research. I mean, okay, that is very Roman. I'll give you that, Black Vile. Another day in paradise. I got up early and watched the sun come up. I love my airship. Hurt. And then it's attacked by the resurgent Skyborn Empire. I'll buy a new propeller, I swear. What did you... Did you hit something again? That mountain came out of nowhere. Uh, uh, okay.
That's the new Skyborn Empress. My parents said she's been working with us humans to get a human empress. Like a king or something. Maybe I'll be picked. Is that so? Yeah, everyone loves her. They say she's really pretty. Yes, she is very pretty. Have you seen her, mister? I have. We knew each other when we were young. Oh my god, how did Rylar survive? What was she like? Strong. Beautiful. Proud. I loved her. Seriously? Girls are gross, but I guess empresses are okay. See ya. How did Rylar live through that? The current god of magic even flat out said, I can't sense him anymore. I still love her. And my heart will tell me what to do. After I finish mass murdering people because they're nothing more than miserable peasants. Oh my god. I've run out of words. Okay. Yeah, that game was actually pretty good. Until the outro. That outro sucked. Good god. I like that picture. That's a good picture, Alex. That... Wow! You know how we talk about a lot of games? Like, it is actually more common than not. A uh, nosedive towards the end. That's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. A lot of games just go right towards the end. And yeah, that's the best part, Cyclone. It would be so easy to fix this. It's an RPG Maker game, for God's sakes. Oh, come on. I was liking your game a little bit. I mean, your gameplay kind of sucked, but I was going with it. Oh, yeah, and there's Corwin. Why was Corwin in this again? Sorry, if I alt-tab, it pauses the game. This will be a net positive game. But, wow. Just wow. The gameplay... Well, okay, I shouldn't say that. We're not there yet. I need to do the audit. I need to do the audit. Yeah, come up with a better ending than this. Done. Okay, so we leave. Magic dissipates. All the magic goes away. The upper city falls down on the lower city, slowly, because it's a slow drain of the magic. And all the people now have to live with the fact that there is no practical difference between Skyborn and human. Because they're all just humans now. Done! That took me, what, ten seconds? Die! Die! Yeah, the sequel literally writes itself. And and that is it. That's that's the game. That's the game. Get off my screen. God, I'm upset about this. Alright, alright, alright. Whatever, whatever. Let's find Final Fantasy VI. Let's recover a little bit, shall we? While we do our audit. Sound like a plan? I've seen worse, too. That's why that's not going to be a triple negative territory. Or more. There are other games that could go three plus on the negatives for outro. That's not that. Uh, let's go with... This. This seems like an appropriate song for this. Mm. Points if you guess it.
So far, nobody's guessed it. I mean, obviously, Justin says it's FF6. But have you guessed the exact song? And I do mean the exact song. You gotta even, you gotta even tell me which version this is, because I've got all three soundtracks. It is World of Ruin, and it is Pixel Remaster, that is correct. Like I said, I feel like it's an appropriate song for what we just did. But this is literally the music theme, musical theme for the world of Ruin. So, you know, a little down. A little down. Out of time. This is obviously an RPG. Uh, called Skyborn. Yeah, everyone felt off during the outro. It either felt like it was a first draft or that someone else wrote it and nobody edited it. Story. Let's see here. Background lore. I'm gonna say no, I think it's more elsewhere. Banter? No. Branching narrative? No. Camera work? No. Characters? Yes. Cinematics? No. Consequent storytelling? No. Cutscene incompetence? No. Dialogue? No. Doodads? Yes. Empty text? No. End game? No. External continuity doesn't apply. Fake drama? No. Foreshadowing? No. Humor? No. Integration and integration? No. Internal continuity doesn't apply. Intro? Good. Lighting? Not applicable. Lo localization? Not applicable. Moments. Anybody got any good moments? Or bad moments? Music direction, not applicable. Rather not good enough. NPC set dressing, nope. Outro, bad. Pacing, bad. Padding, not really a bad thing. Plot. I'll let the pot, plot slide. Princess Peach section. actually, no. Story sequencing, mm, pass. Storytelling mechanics, non-existent. Storyboarding, non-existent. Themes, there's a theme to this game? Visual continuity, no. Uh, voice acting, not applicable. Visual storytelling, yes. World building, yes. No one can stop the lore runner, Jesse's mask. It's true, no one ever has. <laughs> A lot of people have tried. I think I'm gonna call it a wash, Alex. No offense, I just, I don't think it quite gets there. Which leaves us with a plus three to story. Honestly, that would be noticeably better. Not for the outro.
No, you stalled me, Alex Corbianiki. But you could not stop me. Uh, no, Mr. Red. Uh, well, we got one scene from the Golem, and that's it. Gameplay. So. AI design. No. All roads lead to... No. Animations? No. Audio spam? Eh. Auto battle? Non-existent. Alternate leveling? I'm gonna give a plus for the augment system. I like the augment system. It was neat. It was fun. I didn't play with it till the end, but it's actually a good system. Backtracking. Actually, no. The game kind of skips that, believe it or not. I'm not muted, right? Yeah, no. Best jury non-existent bosses. I don't think there was a single good boss in this entire game, but I also don't think they were bad. They just weren't there. Bugs. No, I only saw the one. Builds. That's kind of already covered. Built-in cheats. No. Camera. Not applicable. Choices. No. Co-op. No. Controls. RPG maker negative. Core combat. No. I'm kind of curious. Where's Dragon Quest on this list? There it is. Kind of compare Dragon Quest 1 and this side by side a little bit. Uh, core mechanics? No. Cosmetics? No. Crashes? No. Difficulty curve? No. Difficulty options? Wash. Durability? No. Scroll forward a little bit. Encounter rate? Fine. Encounter design? Non existent. Enemy variety? Non existent. Fast travel doesn't apply. Gotcha doesn't exist. Graphics eh. grind not a very grindy game. I'll give you that one. Guided to flow of exploration. I think I will actually put a plus under that for the leveling, the exp uh, the explore leveling thing. I already gave the plus. I'm just categorizing it. Oh, well, let's see here. Info in game negative. Interface is. Serviceable intro pass. Well, hang on, intro. I think the intro is good enough to be a wash. Itemization. Let me think about that. Now the next game is gonna be the beginning of the depression block. I'm gonna be warning everybody every single game we start streaming over the next weak, because it's the depression block. And then we'll call it a wash. Git doesn't apply. Not like this. This is not from Breath of Fire. No microtransactions. That doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. There's no map. There's no mission checkpoint in. Music is actually pretty good. Just the music. Uh, no new game plus. No options. Outro sucked. No seconds and minutes, believe it or not. Save system's actually pretty good. This song's amazing. Replayability? I don't think so, but if anyone wants to argue it, I'll hear it. No, that's a neutral, Dr. Winter. It is a neutral, though. This game, ironically, this game could be much worse than it is. Yeah, Space Marine is after the... De Space Marine is the recovery from the Depression block. So it's outside of it. Unskippable cutscenes. None of that, though. Hang on, I have an idea. A terrible, terrible idea. We usually don't give out aggregates during the audit, but I have a couple of things that were better than usual. I think that would add up to a positive.
That leaves us with a plus three to gameplay. Plus three, plus three. That's funny. Yes, Valiant Hearts definitely belongs in the Depression block. I could be wrong about that, in fairness, but it's probably going to be a Depression block game. Uh, Skyborn, here we go. If those of you not aware, it's a game about the about World War One. Enough said. What the hell is a prequel show to Soma, DJT? And either way, no. Honestly, plus three plus three is better than I would expect from an RPG Maker game. Well, I suppose that's unfair. As I mentioned earlier, there are there is such a thing as good RPG Maker games. But, you know, whatever. Sixty percent ratio on both gameplay and story. Almost. Point three pluses per hour, which is actually not bad, really. Can I get a drum roll, please? Final score. Has Umaro's theme pirates up here? Or is this Gogo? Is Umaro Gogo? I always get this confused. This is Gogo. Yeah, that would have given away. 16.3. Anything net positive is positive. Anything net positive is positive. I, I, was saying, I think that beats Dragon Quest 1. Pulling up my list here. I know it beats Dragon Quest 2. Yeah, it beats Dragon Quest 1. I know it beats 2, and I think it beats 3. I'm looking for it. Yep, that just barely beats Dragon Quest 3. And yeah, that tracks. The game is mostly inoffensive. So... There are some issues, some of which are just inevitable, thanks to the fact that it's an RPG Maker game. But it's competent for what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do it, DJT. I'm not doing it. It's not part of the game, so I'm not going to cover it. That's not how that works out. Um, let's see here. 16.3. Uh, looks like it's going to be Blade Traval. Who is 2.7 away. Yep, I'm right, because Don Crow is 3 point your way. It's also a relatively quick RPG. Honestly, it's actually probably shorter than I put it for, because we sort of got stalled for an hour. So, Blade Taval is putting that towards Stranger of Paradise. You got it. So, I now have a very short amount of time to cook, clean, sleep, and also record a rumination on this. Don't worry, it's going to be a very short, uninformative rumination. There's no reason to watch it. Don't watch the rumination. And I will see you tomorrow for uh, whatever the hell we're playing next. I think we're going right into Franbo. What are we playing tomorrow? Hang on. Yep, we're going right into Franbo, which is a grotesque horror game. So this is your early, uh, you know, warn viewer, uh, viewer discretion. There we go, viewer discretion warning. So I'll see you there.